Okay, we are now live for session one of Day with Zendler, and I am super excited. I'm in chatting to Tracy Browning. Now, if you guys don't know her, and it's, it's not going to happen, you're going to know her because she's really prolific at helping the group. Um, she's not a course creator. She's not, she doesn't do, you know, sell courses or any of those things. She sells her own courses, but she doesn't sell the platform itself. So this is a really unique opportunity to see what someone is doing with Zenla. Now, Tracy is, I've, she's been on literally every live. She's on office hours. She's in Australia and she just pops up all the time. It's like she doesn't sleep at all. So, uh, Tracy, a welcome. It's so good to have you in here. The team, I know, are, are really like, wow, Tracy's coming on. That's brilliant. So we're so welcome to have you uh, on a day with Zenla for the first session, nine o'clock. <laughs> 5.30 in the p.m. here. <laughs> yeah. So it is super, super exciting. So Tracy's going to just talk a little bit about what she does, like how she set up those sort of things. And then I'm going to sort of fire some questions and find out um, how she's been using the platform. So, uh, Tracy, do you want to do you want to take it away? I can do that. I'll just share my screen. Right. I'll and... be I'll be around. I'm I'm if you need me at all, I'm here. I'm watching everything that's going on. So if you need me, just uh, holler. No problems. Well, I do hope we have plenty here. This is such a wonderful type of um, sharing that the Zenla team do on a regular basis so that you can get to know other people that, that use this platform. But first of all, just a little about me. No, I don't sell courses to build courses like we see uh, a lot in the group. I have been, I purchased New Zenla back in 2019 and it was oh, after lots and lots of, of, of research and, but I'll give you some quick background. I uh, have been long arm quilting. So I'm a machine quilter, a commercial machine quilter. So yes, in the craft area uh, and I've been long arming since, it's what it's called, uh, since um oops we start back to here here's me this is the type of work that I do I've been doing it since 2000 so all that stitching you see on that quilt is what I do on a supersized sewing machine that is on a large table that one is actually one of my sister's designs and it's been published in a book in America so I started that first and then I fell into creating an e-commerce website so that was about mid 2000s, um, building up or supplying um, items for machine quilters here in Australia, because we just didn't have much on hand. And normal um, shop fronts, it's, it's too much to invest in that stock for the very, very small market, niche market here in Australia. In uh, 2005, this is the long arm quilting machine that I use, but I also sell. So in 2004, I was invited to the US to teach at a national show because I was producing some rulers and templates to use with these machines. So I went over there and I found this particular brand machine. And about six months later, I bought the first one into Australia and started selling them to other machine quilters that wanted them. It wasn't the original intention. I just wanted the machine because it felt so good. A year later, I made a conscious decision to invest in a computerized system. They were just sort of becoming available in the, in the world. And again, this is based in America. And I saw it for the first time in 2005 when I was over there. And I actually got the very first one in the world off the production line. So that was in 2006. That's what, 22 to, uh, yeah, a lot of years ago, we're 2022, take six, uh, I, 17 years ago, 18 years ago, that tablet, that computer is actually still going to this day, which is a credit to the, um, the owner of that business. From there, uh, we really needed that uh, support and education to build uh, this niche industry here in Australia and New Zealand. So I created with one of my customers an event similar to the ones in America called the Australian Machine Quilting Festival. 
Now that ran, we had five events over 10 years and the last th uh, two, I totally did by myself. And that was a massive event with teachers from around the world, um, 90 plus classes on offer. And I had students that traveled to this event here in our capital city, two hours away from me. And they came from all over Australia and New Zealand to attend because there was just nothing like it here in Australia. And it was specifically, it, it focused on long arm quilting or those that were in business machine quilting quilts and and having their own home based businesses so that was really my passion is to help others invest in the right equipment and set them up to be successful in running their own home based machine quilting businesses so uh, very luckily for me I actually sold this event in 2019 about eight months six months prior to the pandemic starting. So I think that was uh, very fortunate at the time. Uh, as yet, the new owners, which I'm still fully supporting, uh, have yet, they postponed three times to run this event yet again. 2018 was the last time it ran. Um, and hopefully November this year, uh, third, fourth time lucky, they, they will actually be able to execute this event successfully. But prior to the last event in 2018, I started doing the research on how I could pivot to online education, doing the same that I've been doing, I'd done for 10 years in supporting machine quilt, quilters across Australia and New Zealand, um, both in the, the skills required but, uh, to physically machine quilt, but also the business side of things, encouraging and supporting and giving them the right information so that they can be successful in running their own business. And it was actually about early 2018, prior to the last festival, that I came up with the Machine Quilting Academy idea and did lots of brainstorming. I've got a massive brain dump of information on how it could all work. Um, sadly, my health went downhill that year. Um, 2018, I was actually under the knife only two weeks after the last event, having spinal surgery and uh, nothing actually happened. I was hoping to launch it at that event, didn't happen. End of 20, I'd done a lot of research. Like I said, I was looking at WordPress options, um, having to run courses that way. And all of it was just very overwhelming. And we all know WordPress can be very overwhelming. I've always done my own websites. I've actually, my very first website in 2002 or one or something like that was actually done on Publisher. So I've done Publisher, Joomla, KubeCart, WordPress, um, and now New Zendler. 2019, I found New Zendler and committed to that platform. Um, I, my health was back and I started to teach myself using the tutorials and trial and error. And yes, I have got a reasonable amount of technical knowledge, all of it self-taught. I've not done any sort of study whatsoever and it's trial and error. Um, as I keep saying, and everybody else keeps saying on the Zenla team, test, test, test. And that's basically, I just, it was trial and error. You've got to test it, do it, test it, see if it works every single time. So in December, 2019, I actually launched what I call my IQ Summit, which was an evergreen type of thing on a different platform. I still hadn't quite get it, got into Zenla at that point. Didn't have, Zenla didn't have Zoom, it didn't have Lives. It, um, it was still fairly simple. It worked really well as a simple course platform, but didn't have all the bells and whistles that it certainly has now. So I did start with another platform, which was specifically about running a summit. But of course I couldn't do, I couldn't, I wasn't just happy with the way that platform worked because it really was truly just for summits and I wanted so much more. I couldn't take subscriptions. I could only take single payments. Couldn't personalise a lot of things. The, all the email automations were, um, they were just one, 
they were standard. Um, there was no personalization except for the name of the webinar each each month. And I was running one to two webinars um, every single month. And at first they were free just to see whether the whole concept would work. And eventually after the first 10 full length webinars and they go between one and two hours each and they were on a specific topic, then um, I said, I only had until the 10th webinar to sign up for a founding member deal. And I certainly had a lot that did that, a couple of hundred. Um, but I've got over 700 in that group um, that still come along every single month. So Machine Quilting Academy was born, but there are three ways that the Academy supports people. So most of those courses now are available to purchase individually. Um, the IQ Summit, I've kept the name, is all education on the IntelliQuilter, which is the computer system to run a long arm quilting machine. And then I have the gold membership group, so the, the, the top level as such, and that provides all the business resources, all of the IQ Summit content, plus there are free hand machine quilting courses, and there's a lot of peer support in the community and our monthly Q&A meetings where basically they get access to me but more importantly they get access to each other they can see each other talk to each other and I have a, a good number every single month that come on and they can submit their questions prior so I can do a lot of research and provide um, support documentation or I can create videos to, to support their answers to their questions and that's turning into a massive library of content as well. So that's sort of um, where I came from. But to make New Zenla, oh, let's see. Yes, the, the original membership launched in January 2019. But as I said, it did have its drawbacks. Um, and I still wasn't totally happy with it. So then that was still going. I started with New Zenla and I did launch that gold membership in September 2020 um, and, I, and I launched with nothing in there. I could start, I started transferring over all the IntelliQuilter content or the webinars, past webinars from their previous platform and I started building them out into more of a, a course as well. So they had the replay but we also had a lot of the individual videos that we'd made for those webinars so I could build out PDFs and um, individual videos and more of the, the, the written descriptions of what we were doing. And um, I didn't do too bad. I was pretty nervous, very nervous with a launch, trying to understand the hows and, and whys and, and email sequencing. I'm doing the, the, the uh, email uh, automation course right now, <laughs> David as well. Um, and thankfully I did work most of that out and I had some uh, content and I only sent it out to about 300 of, in actual fact, it was 300 of my immediate past students from the live event, that, that festival, um, just to see how I go. And it was a, a once off lifetime deal because there wasn't much in there. And very few of those were IntelliQuilter owners. So they were really committing to me just for my support and knowledge of the industry at that time. So 57 members signed up at that time. So I was fairly happy um, with that and then started moving all the IntelliQuilter stuff. Now, if anyone was around at that time, I did struggle for quite a while to try and migrate the original membership over to New Zealand, mainly because my business model was that if they wanted to show up for free, they could just purchase a free pass and they could attend live and watch a replay. Originally, it was for 24 hours. I did cut it back to 12. Um, anyone that subscribed obviously had, they could go watch a replay at any time or consume the course. So, so to be able to set this up in New Zealand, New Zealand was a little bit tricky for a little while, but I have managed to do it. Things are still 
improving and, and changing. I still have that issue remembering to do all the right steps to make it all automated. And sometimes it will depend on my internet on how quickly Zoom will convert the video so that I can get it back uploaded within, so they can watch it within that 12 hour period. I time all my events at 9 a.m. at my time, which is between 4.30 and 8.30 p.m across America and Canada because for oh, probably 70, 75% of attendees would be from um, the Americas, from the American people and the Canadian. Uh, and I also get obviously all my Australian and New Zealand um, students that can come in early in the morning. So once I eventually moved it over, the tricky bit was to move all of the students and there were over 700 of them. Some of them were lifetime members. Uh, some of them were just free plan members. Those were the easy ones. They were the easy ones. I could just set, I could segregate them all out, put them in separate spreadsheets and bulk enroll them and, and set them up. But the ones that had were in the middle of a, a three month, a six month or a 12 month plan then I had to deal with every single one of those individually so that did take some time and I did lose some those people never lost access of the content in the previous platform they just weren't getting any of the new content once I'd fully committed to New Zealand for all of the IntelliQuilda education so we eventually got there and I did do it uh, on a case-by-case -case basis by providing coupons to for them to physically sign up again and pay but they would get um obvious discounts relevant to where they were at in their subscription at the time and it was always being generous so they got way more than what uh they had originally paid for so i got most of them but i did lose some in that migration process i've certainly gained a lot more because uh it's a lot easier for them to log in to find what they need compared to the uh, previous platform so in that i have to thank zenla for making it that much easier um to, to be really clear, I did create this infographic to, to be able to promote how it all works. So I guess it's a little bit different than, than most because I still have hundreds that come for free. And I, I, they all know that you know, if they don't make it live or they don't see it, and, and of course it's a bit naughty because it's 12 hours available for 12 hours after from the beginning of the live. So if it's at 8.30 at night in America or 4.30 in the afternoon, they can only watch it until 4.30 or 8.30 the next morning. So they, they really do need to commit to seeing it. But you know what? You get what you pay for. They don't pay to attend that one. Um, but those who, who want everything at their fingertips or haven't been with me from the beginning know of all the valuable content that is in there and all the education so that's what we've done and it's because there's the chat i can demonstrate live and again it's all about the software for the, uh, the computer system for the quilting machine but we have a lot of other tips and, and tricks in there as well so they're all learning um so that's really where i was at and and it's still a little bit of double handling i do use the countdown timer i use um the interactive live webinar and i use the replay page i filter out who the email goes to only to the free pass holders and they get the link to that replay page and then there's a countdown timer on that page so that when the 12 hours is up they get redirected to a page to encourage them to join as a subscriber um, and i've certainly gotten a few that way so this is actually and, and i'm always tweaking this is my home page for logged out um, uh, visitors to the zenla site 
By the way, I did have this all on WordPress as well, with just purely a link through to the education, to the academy. But I've now totally got everything on Zenla. Once the, the blog was created and the fact that I can have blog posts only visible to members of a course or a membership or a bundle, um, as well as public, that solved all my issues of what I was trying to achieve with the uh, with the blog and having being able to use the blog as another resource area for members so I try to be as clear as I can you know the, the aim is to be successful in your machine quilting business um, and the fact that there are three ways that that the uh, the site can assist with the the premium gold membership just the IntelliQuilter information. Then we move down to, where's the next slide? Here we go. Um, I only show some featured courses on the first page, um, which is the current um, live freehand course that I'm running. I'm halfway through. The quilt behind me is the sample um, that people are being inspired from. Um, some a, a Canva course, which I use for lots of things inside a quilting business and IQ 101 and then the gold membership group. So yeah, a bit about me. There's some free courses on offer. Uh, one was a, a live webinar, um, one's an actual course. So anybody can experience how it works and how the platform works. And then as a benefit to any gold members, I also have a page which is the machine quilters listing. And uh, that's actually uh, a marketing tool. So anybody that is in business, they can be listed on here and then the general public can go and find that listing. I'm always getting phone calls from all across Australia on where can I find a machine quilter to finish my quilt. Of course, I've got some lovely testimonials. I, I do rotate those around occasionally because I do have quite a few that I have collected over time. Um, and that, that's just basically it. So I do have quite a few, as I said, static pages and um, the free courses. Uh, I have finally, since I launched the gold membership group, I have doubled my membership, but I've only ever done one more launch from that first uh, two week founding members launch back in September, 2020. I guess I've just been focusing on, on building content and I've really not done any sales. Um, I've just been able to just keep up with the webinars every month plus the Q&As every month um, and a few other little tidbits in between to add. And really my focus should be moving forward is, is promoting what I've got to get people in or selling some of those courses individually. So that's it from my slides. Um, David, did you, I can go into the actual site itself to show more what it looks like once people are logged in or uh, do you have any other questions? Yeah, um, I thought it was brilliant, Tracy. So yeah, we've had a few comments coming in saying, you know, oh, I didn't know quilting was so um, sort of popular. But of course, <laughs> <clears throat> like lots of things, like any kind of needlework, knitting, these kind of things, quilting, and we're talking like Tracy, that is like industrial, yeah. So yeah, the machine she's that, selling is that package it, is about fifty six thousand Australian dollars. Yeah. So if you're this. paying for that then yeah. you're not going to think twice about joining Tracy's membership if it's teaching no. you all about it, you know, <laughs> and it not, kind of no, sells not at all. Are you, are, so um, with the, how are, how are you actually, so when you originally started, you said you don't do much marketing, but I know because I've talked to you before that you do actually fly out and teach people how to use the machines and things. Is the company actually um, sort of promoting you as well? Is that happening more? Um, no, I don't get anything from there. I, I guess I have been so deeply involved in the industry here in Australia, especially from running the event 
Um, I have won lots of ribbons and awards uh, across the world for my quilting. So I guess that builds some credibility, the expert status. I'm in a huge number of Facebook groups. Um, for those that aren't aware, I mean, three years ago, six years ago, quilting in America is a $4.2 billion industry. Okay, so there's over 30 million quilters and they do surveys every three years. There are some professional groups and this has been happening since the early 2000s that these surveys are happening. So we do have some statistics and, and, and information to, to help grow the industry. Um, COVID uh, has mm, sadly killed off all the face-to-face -face shows. They have all the, um, the machine quilting, specific machine quilting, not just quilting shows, but machine quilting shows are now extinct in America. Sadly, they have all suffered terribly because they just could not run. Um, as many of the shows here, we, we, we've all had a, that, that break. Online, that first year, my e-commerce site doubled. I doubled my income e-commerce online, but I was already there. I've been online on the e-commerce. Everyone knows my e-commerce uh, business name is Constantine Quilts. And that came from, I'm a farmer, by the way, where, where I'm on a rural property here in South Australia. We're currently um, planting all our crops. And the original owners of this property came from Constantine in Cornwall. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this That's particular amazing. area is is all all derived derived from uh, the Cornish people. They all came. They emigrated out here, the Cornish miners, because this is a big mining area. Once the mine dried up, it's turned. You know, it, they all went farming. So mm. the, that's how the, the, the farm name is Constantine Farm. So I naturally came up with Constantine Quilts. And I mean, that was in 1998 that yeah. I, I, I created that first business name, registered that business name. And oh, then went wow. online with e-commerce in um, 2001 or two, something like that when I first started. So, wow, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, so I've been doing it for a long time. So I do have that expert status. And yes, I travel all over Australia and New Zealand and been to America a number of times teaching as well. So I had that status. Facebook, obviously, as much as you, you love it and you hate it at times, um, the groups are, are, are great because just like I do on in the Zendler group, I'll jump on and I have so many handy tips uh someone's having a problem and it's, a, it's the same problem over and over and over again with with threads or tensions or their their machines playing up and there are some standard step-by-step -step troubleshooting tips that you can always provide exactly the same as a tech software platform as well so it, it's it's not actually that different <laughs> Yeah, so, it, it, in everything, you know, in everything, yeah. it's like I, I do in completely different software and there's key things you just you just repeat. It's like a parrot. You're just repeating the same thing because um, there's those steps um, for sure. But um, no, I, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I think that I think everybody would love to see um, if you can show. Obviously, be careful with your emails if you've got any email names. But if you want to share anything um, to show uh, how you've got yep. things set up, because I think it's really interesting. Uh, and I want to pick up on, on a couple of points is that, you know, you self taught yourself at the beginning, because I guessing there was no training um there or not enough training to get you to where you, or specific things you needed to achieve that weren't shown in the training when you initially started uh on zendla yeah you mean um yeah you didn't have all the features you know there's so many more features now it, uh, you know continually coming out with them um and so i i came up with workarounds and what i wanted um to achieve and then you come out with a feature so i'd have to go and adjust everything again <laughs> yeah. <It's> so like, um. <laughs> so you know it, it, it can be it, it's good and it's bad at times all the, all the new features because i'm determined to make something work and uh yeah and then you come out with <laughs> with with what i needed so yeah it it's 
yeah, it's funny, but that's how you do it. Oh, I'm trying to log in incognito and I've gone up to my six capture test thing that won't let me log in. Come on. Oh, <laughs> this cars. is this is live. So this is what this happened. is live. <laughs> trying to find why won't it let me? There's another one. Oh, for goodness sake. Yay. That was seven goes at, at, at choosing things in the pictures. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Live. It's yeah, great. that's right. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, okay. So back end first. Let's go back to that. My normal page. So where do we want to show you? What do you want to see first? Um, I guess, like, because you... Obviously, lives is a really important part of your course and, and those sort of things. So it's um, how you're using it. Maybe now, are, are you still are you using the like live class features in there? Um, yep, I use the live classes uh, more my Q and A lives. Um, so originally, some of these are, uh, you can't reuse because it was prior to pricing. Yeah. So that, I would create one every single month. And yeah, they, they're not huge numbers that come along 15, 12, 17, 20, whatever. Mm. But now I have um, 12 months scheduled as a recurring live class and uh, 58 registrations in there. And they come along and it's, I, I love that now because it's all automated. I don't have to worry about the emails. They all go out automatically one day, one hour and 10 minutes prior um with reminders to submit any questions um, so is that on if you've got that on a recurring then have you yeah that one's on a recurring now oh perfect so you're yep. using that and it's going through yep. that process. Uh, it's also inside a a core everything all the replays are inside a course uh, let's go to courses 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 um gotta find it i have too many courses now way too many <laughs> You can see uh, how busy um, Tracy is. Uh, go courses. Why can't I find it? Let's go back to uh, Q. Not finding it. I do use the, um, there it is. So my Q and I live sessions on the curriculum should go so these are so i've now separated them here we go 2022 and all the ones are still in draft mode coming still for the rest of the year then we've got 2021 then we've oh got yeah 2020 and I inside see. each of those is um do, 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 go to curriculum so current year let's go down to here yeah, so, so where Tracy's got the draft, obviously users can't see those lessons. No. It's just she's no. in as admin, so you can see them um, as admin. So yeah. being in draft mode is a really good way for you to, if you've got already got content or a lesson set up, if, you, if you've got live students in there, if you put make sure that's in draft, then your students won't see it. And then when you want to release it, you just undraft it and then they see it. So this is a really powerful and good way to uh, be able to control the content that you want to go out, especially in a membership site like Tracy's got. Yep. So inside every single lesson. So this is a draft one that's not happened yet. Um, I've already got it uh, all set up with, um, uh, you know, please submit your question. Uh, you can register all sorts of uh, rules and regulations. Please raise your hand. No silly questions, etc. Just because <laughs> I, I'm getting new members every time. Yeah. So the minute one has run, so once June, this one's live, so people will see this. Um, but once we've actually done the live and I upload the replay into it, I'll turn around and take the July one out of draft. So the next time they'll go and find that one. So 2nd of May, uh, you can go back in and edit anything. Did I add anything? I can't remember. So the replay is in there. The slides are, that's the replay. That's the slides because uh, people, this is the questions from Linda. That was her question. And then I've answered it as well on the slide because I use Google Slides. Oh, so okay. I can actually update them on the fly 
as either myself or the peers in the live class session come up with the answers. So then Connie had a question. Uh, we had a big discussion. Sorry, then Tracy, you're then exporting that as PDF and putting them straight into the into the. Yes. Oh, yes. right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Because yep. so I, I haven't that... tried it yet, but I think from Google Slides you could actually embed it. Um, oh, okay. so I haven't tried that. It would be yeah. live then. It would actually yeah, be live. It would be. Yeah. Yeah. So just an idea. Um, and then I do have the discussion open because then uh, Linda came back afterwards because she didn't make it to that one live, mm. and yep, thanked us for. Uh, two of us are answering her question so uh but there would be others others where i have done the research on on whatever questions were asked and i would come up with a lot more links and information uh even extra videos that will add in to um answer questions that we've discussed during the live meeting so it, it sort of fills it all out these are the only ones that I really push also, if we go back to curriculum, um, inside the gold membership group, because they're the only ones that get these, I have invested, well, like we were talking earlier, with Searchy. So um, all of those live meetings are in Searchy as well so that these members can search. It doesn't work when it's in preview mode. And that's one thing with Searchy. It does not work in preview mode. I would have to log out of my admin and log in as a student to be able to get that to work. And it doesn't work in incognito either. Um, you can um, use, you can grab the widget from Searchy and you could yep. put that into the page. Um, that that's works. what that is. All oh, right. Okay. okay. So you've just got to click here button, but it's yep. not going through. Oh, that's yeah. strange because it's only works. only when I'm uh, in as admin it won't work. Um, oh. I can get it to work, but it won't work when I'm in as admin. Go incognito. Go to this is when you're logged in, by the way. So gold members have got their own dashboard. IQ Summit have got their the dashboard, or they can just scroll down and see every single course that they've got. Right. So is, how are you getting the different dashboards per um, per button there is okay that going so to... gold member dashboard click on that and it goes to the bundle dashboard oh, okay so what's the other one going straight into the into that'll the go course? because iq summit there's two memberships so there's the the premium one gold membership and then the iq summit is also a bundle of classes courses that are specific to that one so it's right, a different okay. le level yeah. yeah it's uh so you can see how it's quite involved i'm sure a lot of people are looking yeah. at this going a oh, what i don't know <laughs> because yeah. obviously tracy's been working this up and uh making it work for her so he, he can get these things can get quite complicated when you start to get in them uh, yeah. and that's gonna that's gonna bring me on to a question for you in a second um oh, how do you... there's still a lot of work to do um <laughs> my biggest negative on how I've got this all set up at the moment is there's not a clear success path for people that are members. Um, I've struggled to try and make it really clear that there's the, the three different services, the premium gold membership, the next membership is just in Telequilter training and then just to buy individual courses. I've certainly sold some individual courses um, so that helps but I know that it's not, and I even I get frustrated that um, to be able to give a clear path to where people um, currently are and where they want to go, um, I've yet to work that out in my own head on how to do it. It's almost like I need a, a chat bot or a, some sort of um, survey which will then create automations to guide them through to the areas that they need to at what level they may be um, but that is um, a big thing that I have to try and get straight in my own mind on on how to help people help themselves yeah oh yeah yeah maybe maybe it's a case that you could depending on the level they're going at that the automations can be set up to send them through a path of things they need to follow yeah um, I sort of I need a, I need I need a, a a survey 
the, where whatever they answer will then set off the right automation. Like branching. Yes. Like a branching kind of, um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I d you know, I do know that in the in the future we're looking, you know, obviously memberships is a really big part. So there's a lot of things to memberships yeah. that, that Zenla has been thinking about, such as additional pages that are within the course itself, rather than only being able to access things like the course access page. In mm -hmm. which case, if that's possible to create new additional pages, you can you can still do it, but it depends on how you've got your site set up. Uh, if yep. it's a pure membership site, you could do that with pages. Um, you could just create pages for logged in users and no one buying a course would see those. Or be well, I'm sort of in. doing that now because when yeah, you're logged think... out, you can't see member help. You yeah. don't see community. Mm -hmm. uh, you do see resources and that's where I have the machine quilters listing. Um, yeah. But the member resource library, once you go to that, and if you try to click on them, which are specific blog posts, I've done it on purpose. I want non-members to see what is what they're potentially missing out on, but they can't actually go in and read the article. So that's where the, the blog itself, um, I, I do like finally, because you knew I was one of the ones that kept on asking yeah. for that. Yeah. Um, but I needed to make it easier for people to actually find them. And then the tools I use is this is where the only time I try to sell some stuff to, to visitors, which is the quilting tools, which I sell in my e-commerce. And then these are affiliate stuff. So uh, on what I, I would use um, all the time, I have to say, I do use Moose End, but more for my e-commerce site. At mm. this point, I'm not using it for Zenla. I'm using Zenla Mail for everything. Yeah, so that's good. That's that's really good because you are. Um, so how like how be, how good and beneficial has Zenla been for you? Are you like have you, you, obviously you've looked around at all the other platforms? You've yeah. you've tried most of them, I'm sure. And what in the end? Why did you apart from the great price? Because we're talking about like because Tracy's been on so long, she's got a really good um, deal. <laughs> so apart from the price, what is it actually that makes you stay with Zenla and that attracts you to 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 Zenla in now it as of now? But it just makes sense, um, as in the tech. The it, it just makes sense. It's easy for me to work out. It's a bit like the IntelliQuilter software. Um, it's it's step by step. If you read the instructions, you can execute it. It's as simple as that. There, there's, and if I can't find it, then honestly, I've haunted that tutorial site, as you well know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I keep finding all your spelling errors. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't mention that. Don't mention that. Um, we've actually got we got someone going to be looking at going through everything and um, copy and uh, check in everything. So that's in the <laughs> process. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to stop sharing. Um, yeah, I uh, I have to relearn it now because of uh, all the, the new updated site. <laughs> but it's yeah, right, I, I've got... You've got the foundation. So it is learning extra things, but they're not coming out in mass. It's not like we're giving you. So you no. can build on it. You can build no. on that. I guess, um, yeah, most a lot of people see me. Yes, I'm, I'm quite active in the Facebook group. But I have to say, everybody that asks the question is actually benefiting me. Because if I don't know the answer immediately, and I love it when I do, I actually go and I'll test it. I'll, I'll try and recreate what they're doing. Or I'll go, I know I've seen it. So I'll go find it in the tutorial site to make sure um i've got the right information but what it's doing is making me train myself and that's truly what it is sometimes you you don't know what question to ask because you haven't needed to ask that question yourself so when somebody else does it i, I all i say is i encourage everybody if you're not sure ask the question because it helps me for a start and i'm sure it would help a huge number of other people as well I would always go to the tutorials first and see if you can find the answer or search in the Facebook group because it does have a really good search feature. Um, pop in the, the term that you're looking for and you'll get so many results. I've certainly used the Facebook group to uh, 
I've seen something at some point, but I can't remember the exact details. And I'll go back to find that post um, and try and get my head around, okay, they've managed to achieve this. How did they do it? It's possibly not standard in Zendler, but there's so many workarounds. So uh, um, I do a lot with uh, Integrately. And the one thing, I'm not a huge fan of the reports in Zendler at this point. Um, so I purely rely on every time someone has finished a course, I have a, a zap or a, a, it executes in Integrately and it, and it actually fills a Google Sheet for me. So all I have to do is go to that Google Sheet. I have a summary, plus I have every single course uh, on a separate page and I can see when somebody started it and when they finished it. And, and it's just all automated. So once a month when I do a newsletter, I can just go and pull that data and go, yay, it, you know, X, Y, Z have completed this many courses and, you know, encourage others to get in there as well. And I just find that really easy. Whereas I really struggled to get that information out of the reports. Yeah, so you're using it. So, I mean, this is classic because like what Tracy's doing there, she's implementing, she's going ahead. She's She's got something she needs to do. So she's thinking of ways to doing it. Sometimes she might post on the group, find out how, if other people are doing something similar. Because a lot of things are like, well, if someone's doing something similar to what you're trying to achieve, you can then adapt it, make it work for what you need it to work with. And that's where people sort of fall to bits. When you see like things like the email challenge that we've just run, me and Alice, uh, we were showing automations. And I was saying, well, this, this is automations we're showing you. But this is not just for an email sequence. You could also use these same automations and processes. And this is where people sort of lose it. You can also use those same processes for course automations for it's already part of the funnel. So funnel automations, you could or filtering inside of email broadcasts. But a lot of people, they just want to follow exactly what's happening. So if you try and open yourself up and sort of think outside the box, like I can use that for this, 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 this area, then suddenly the world becomes a bigger place. Mm. Uh, that's what I think. Yep. The, with the two free courses, one of them is just a getting to know your IntelliQuilter components. If so, I've got it automated that if they... If somebody's coming in just to get an idea on what the system is before they've purchased or, or anything, um, once I've completed that, I've got that automated via Integrately to then enroll them automatically into the next one, which is uh, the basics and the troubleshooting of that system, which are the two free courses that I provide. And then a whole series of email automations will go out on that one saying, have you seen this? Can we help you? Uh, any questions? And et cetera, work your way through the course. But there's so many courses in there now, or webinars that were yeah. turned into courses. Uh, there's no way in the world I've got automation set up nicely to go with all of them to then maybe encourage. I have a very generic Oh, yay, you finished the, the course. I'm so thrilled. Now, if you're a member, please go and have a look and see what else you might be interested at this point. So it's a generic, um, yay, you finished and, and what, what's next? Um, promote it on social media. Um, say that you've done it. What did you learn? And most of them, I, I try to get them to submit information. Um, I do want to, how about we, I know, Anyone want to see? I've actually got some really good um, interaction happening in a current community in one particular course, which is a 14 week live course every Wednesday that I'm running. And the community, we're nearly out of time. And Shimmer's yeah, screen. that's um, yeah, that's that's a really good one because a lot of users say, "Oh, should I use discussions? Should I use communities?" You can already see that Tracy's using discussions because you saw them in the course. Yeah, but yeah. the community thing is a really good one. Um, yep. Yeah, go, go ahead, so, Tracy. We've seen it. So I've got obviously all the communities that I've got available. The platinum one isn't actually live. This is only showing up because I'm admin and I've set it up but not published it. But the gold member one. IQ Summit one, that's the two different memberships, and the Impressive Grid Work. So Impressive Grid Work is a standalone course, and that's the one. I'll click on that one. And I'm getting such a great response. So this was only nine hours ago. 
and this is what they're doing they're, they're they're putting all their homework in they're printing out all the stuff for every single week some of them have already started stitching and making all their samples um I finally you know they've caught up with all their drawings so we draw every week i draw they draw and we talk about when we can use them the order in which to draw or stitch people are asking uh, where we're we going so here we go all the different ones some of these don't even have the big machine some of them are only on a little domestic sewing machine because it's relevant for for anybody that wants to machine quilt on any size machine so it keeps on going keeps on going someone's actually made their sampler quilt and started stitching it on their machine <laughs> um and we're only on to week nine i'm, I'm doing the videos for week nine now um I did create all the this course last year, made my own sampler quilt. But as far as the weekly lessons, I'm creating them as I go. So I'm only just <laughs> keeping ahead. Because <laughs> I know you're busy anyway with all the stuff you're trying to run and keep up with this as well. It's like we need oh, two of you. There needs yeah. to be two of you. <laughs> That's right. The one thing uh, my members, oh, they're loving the app. Absolutely love the app because it's so much easier. Uh, but this is in the gold group where they're asking questions where I always try to answer. I've got Erica from UK have, look, looking for advice on a, on a bit of a problem quilt that she's been received from, that's been unpicked from a previous quilter. And how does she deal with this customer and how does she um, complete this to a satisfactory standard to, you know, that it's all about the reputation of her business now because she's trying to fix somebody else's problem um mm. some of them are in both so they've slipped in the one thing is people would love to be able to put more than one image in their post in the community at a time like we can with facebook um but we can't we're very limited but we get lots so yeah there, there's a reasonable amount it's not lots i'm sure there's more people in uh a facebook group though i do have a facebook group group for iq summit and I'm actually starting just in the last three or four weeks. I think I'm getting more interaction on here than what I am in that particular group. But yeah. most people are on Facebook all the time. So it's a hard one to know. Yeah, I think it's, it's going to be a natural thing. I mean, we are bringing out the new communities. You know, that is going to come out at some point, um, which is going to be, I think that will be a game changer. I think that people will just be in there because I know it's private within your Zenda site. So I think then, then you're going to get masses moving across and probably you won't need Facebook. Um, I'm hoping. Maybe you'll use that for, for marketing purposes. But mm -hmm. I, I would love to get all of my members just into my own site. I can't do it at the moment because community is not good enough for me to be able to do it at this stage. But I know when it does come out, it will be fully fledged. And I've things got to be like a little. I still have so many free pass holders in the summit group. Um, I think it's two hundred and thirty odd paid, but there'd still be five hundred odd that are free. And one of the benefits of being a subscriber is the private community. So, um, yeah. But the the ones that are in the Facebook group are mostly those that don't want to pay. So. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's a bit of a, it's a fine balance for me with this group. A lot of them still expect, and, and there is a lot of free information out there, always will be, uh, but they just don't quite get the in-depth and the personalised um, result in, in learning or educating themselves and being able to ask questions from their peers who have been doing it for many, many years. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's also the social side of it. It's mm. like you're in a, your own little club. I mean, who doesn't like a little club where you get to know everybody? I mean, like we have the Zen Zone sessions and when we run our challenges, we get to know lots of the members. We get to see their faces, you know, and it's it bring, it's such a good connection. And you don't really get that on if you're posting a video onto YouTube. You get some nice comments and things like that, but you don't actually get the connection with people. And it's very remote, you know, with Facebook as well. We're running this live into Facebook. We, we can't see anybody else. We can't see their reactions. And it, that's what's no. so lovely about lives and this community interaction that you can get but we do know about the thing about the one image um posting more you know being able to post multiple image in the same post um mm -hmm. is is a good point you know 
And I'm sure Rakesh has seen those posts as well. Did you post that in Facebook? I think you did. Or it was uh, someone else. I it might have been someone have. else. Yeah, uh, this it? <laughs> it hasn't been a, it's not a high priority for me. I I would like I would like a community once it's been all updated to be similar to Heartbeat or Circle. And I would actually then use the community features to create the success path and have separate areas there to then guide them through to the courses that they need to go to. I think that's where I'd truly love the community to grow so that, um, and all the different community softwares that I've looked at, uh, like I said, Circle and Heartbeat are probably the two that lend themselves to being able to create that um, success path or uh, the, the, the framework to then help students or members find where they need to go mm. instead of just having this great big list of, of courses. Um, on that, uh, the, that dashboard for the membership, um, I think I showed that I do have it set up so that let me go back to here uh go members share the screen to a little bit if they go into the dashboard for the gold members i've tried to slim it down they have the upcoming classes obviously but here is my attempt to streamline where they either go to the q a live they go to the skill building courses, IntelliCorder courses are behind that, and then the business courses. That supplier contact list is a static page, which is mm. also a benefit to get distributor details. Um, but that's how I've tried to streamline because there are so many under the IntelliCorder tab and not, and there's a lot that's just one course for the Q&A. Um, that's my token effort, I guess, of trying to not confuse members yeah it's hard it's hard sometimes you know to actually get it so that because that's the thing that's the mission is to make things really easy for people especially when you're a prolific course creator um mm. and you're running memberships and you're trying to sell courses as well you're like how am i going to make this easy how is people going to understand it you know i mean a classic example is tutorials like we've got so many courses and things up it was like we had to totally revamp it to make it easier to use um, looking at problems that were happening because we had all the courses in bundles and things like that, not being able to see user uh, uh, metrics on how popular certain courses were over others, because that leads us on to what we do in our challenges. So if we haven't got that data, which we didn't when it was all bundled together and everyone was just enrolled in it, then you know we had to rethink it. Also, people were confused because we had... Uh, challenges running then we had a, we had the site initially set as a complete membership site every course was inside the bundle but then we had separate courses from that so the membership site didn't work then because people were signing up into the challenges and not into the bundle and they were like where's all this stuff i'm seeing and because they were already in there they were seeing some of these logged in pages but hadn't enrolled in the bundle so i had to go oh god i've got to just separate it all out and just clear it so it's cleaner plus all the live events. So these are things that are obviously that Tracy has gone through as well, you know. Um, and, and still going through. <laughs> yeah, of course, because it's, you know, we feed back from what our members, we look at, is it easy to use? We think it is, but we turn around to you guys and say, are you finding it easy to use? Is it clearer now? And if the question comes back, no, or this should be moved, then we will take that on board. Um, mm. If it's, if a lot of people are agreeing with that, you know. It's a consensus thing, I think. But yep. So anyway, that's me. And I am so appreciative of A, the continued uh, features that keep getting released or the improvements of. I know you keep going on about a, a new page editor. I'm more than happy with what we got. That's fine. <laughs> I'd have to learn a new one. <laughs> um, I can make it work. I um, oh, that's one thing I didn't probably say when I did the blog challenge, um, I actually have a, an unpublished page that I use to write all my blogs. So I can then just copy over the code into the blog post itself to get it looking how I like it to look um, as an example. 
So I do you play a that? little bit with code, but I've learned a lot from you as well. Yeah. In Because <laughs> Tracy is one of our ninjas. She loves the ninja tricks course. I always bring her up when I'm talking about it. So whether she's there or not, I just oh, Tracy's. That's her favourite course. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I, I've used some of it, but I don't use all of it. I mean, you, you have to be a little bit discerning and um, you can do all these fancy things. But if it doesn't benefit the end person, then there's no point in doing all these fancy tricks. So there are just, there are certain things that I like to that that have been a benefit, but there's other things where I, I certainly don't get too stressed over. Even if I know I can do it, I don't necessarily need to do it. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's that can be overkill. This is like everything in the platform. It's like overuse of of everything is not a good idea. You know, like even overuse of colors in your site, if you're using red and pink or blue and pink and you're using blue and pink, blue and pink blue everywhere, then it, it's overuse of that. And that's the same for any of these kind of like ninja tricks or anything that you're doing. Like animations would be a classic one. I see people that overuse the animation feature on buttons and things like that can, again, really cause a problem to people as well. So, look, Tracy, we're, we're at 10 o'clock. Uh, I've, yes. I've got a list of questions. There's questions gone into the uh, comments area of the Facebook group. So okay. if I know Tracy will probably jump on I've there. I've got to go answer. find it, yeah. Yeah, answer those questions, Tracy. We run on. I'll need you on the next day with Zenla. <laughs> we might have to do a four-hour session with you. Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of other tr little tricky things I did in the back end that uh, has helped when I needed it to. And then, like I said, and then Zenla came out with features so I didn't have to do the workarounds anymore. So <laughs> um, I, I do tend to keep plugging away until I get it how I'd like it and, and then I change my mind so we have to update it again well it's been fantastic Tracy I'd love to have you on again because um I I just have a ton of questions and it's really interesting seeing all those things you do I know that there's comments gone into the chat so if you could go and answer those when you get a chance if you feel like it um, otherwise I'll try and catch up but Tracy's really good she'll look in there and anyone that's yep. asked questions yeah lots of activity today so that's really nice to see uh, yeah I've just found it so I'll go and open them all up and 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 see what's there yeah you can <laughs> see the love that's felt for you Tracy by the amount <laughs> of people that have started commenting and things <laughs> oh goodness oh dear um E-commerce, no, oh, Andrew, no, I don't do e-commerce on Zenla. I do that on WordPress on my e-commerce site. That's a totally separate business and a separate site. Right, okay. Uh, right, we're going to, uh, um, Mammy's no on now, and we're going to swap over. Thank you so much, Tracy. No problem. Um, see you soon. Bye. Bye. Hi, David. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. That was, I knew that would be quite um, quite a good one because um, Tracy's done so much in the platform. Um, I think we've just touched the surface um, with her. And like she said, she doesn't sell courses or any of those, any um, Zenla coach courses like create, creating courses for Zenla or creating sites. She solely runs her quilting business and some other businesses that are not associated with um, anything selling Zenla as such. So it was really nice to see that from some someone that's using it for that. It's a bit like me. I do 3D and sculpting. It's nothing to do with Zen. It's completely off um, those fields. So it's nice to see that point of view. But good to see you, Mamit. Same here. I see a lot of traction, a lot of engagement coming to the session uh, down the post. I was just looking at it and I think it was a wonderful and a uh, bombing session that just happened. And I would have to catch up with it. <laughs> no it's brilliant um also i've just noticed my background is the youtube challenge i didn't even yeah. notice ah oh, dear so uh, i should have um, the same one as mammy has got on so i'll do it for when i come back that will be changed but i'm going to hand you over to the safe hands of mammy um again mammy if you need me at all i am here watching so you can just shout my name and i'll pop up boom all right thank you so much david Hello everyone, a very good evening, afternoon, morning, whatever time zone you are in. I am currently in an Indian time zone, so good afternoon from India. 
So today's topic is something which I really like, and that's uh, selling with storytelling. So let me just share my screen. And this is a topic which is very close to my heart because when I started business, I didn't really know that how to make sales because coming from in the last few years, the traction has changed from traditional marketing to digital marketing. So what we all have seen is traditional markets wherein uh, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning, the shutters would open, you would go in, the shopkeeper would tell you that this is for this much, this is for this much. And you know, this product has this kind of features, this product has this kind of features. If you like the features, if you think that the product is going to work for it, work for you, you pay the price and you buy it. In the last few years, when the digital marketing has evolved, all of us have seen that storytelling, that is telling people about your product or services using stories, engaging them in your stories is making more and more sales. <clears throat> Having said that, I have also seen in the past few years, storytelling is also one of the most important, or rather I would say, the most powerful method that is working to get more and more sales. The pitches that we do today are 80% storytelling and the last 20% is actually a pitch that we put through. And throughout my journey, I didn't really know how to bring up a story, how to create a story. I thought stories would be like what we heard in our childhood, you know, when we couldn't get to sleep, our mothers or fathers would come and tell us that, you know, once upon a time, there was a girl, she was going through this, that, and this happened, and then the prince came in, all of that. I thought that was a story. And I was like, how do I create a fictional story and tell people to buy my product and service? How do I become a storyteller for my brand and make sales? I was completely blown that how would I use storytelling? So today I thought if I have learned the art of using stories, of engaging my audience to make more and more sales, it is time that I should share it with all of my fellow educators because all of us as course creators want one thing, that is to make more sales. In the last date with Zella session, I had shared how to bring in more leads for your academies. So if you've not watched it, I suggest you to go and watch that first and then come here because both of them are very closely linked. So in the first phase, what you would do is following the earlier day with Zender session, you would bring in leads to your business. And once those leads become a part of your list, they become a part of your brand. That is when you start connecting with them through your social media, through your emails, and you start telling them stories, stories of how you started, where you come from, what happened with you, what was the aha or the wow moment, and all sorts of things. Having said that, let's go forward and find out how to sell through storytelling. Okay, so before I go forward, I've already told you that storytelling has proven to be the best way to make efforts, to make sales effortlessly, all right? Now, let me show, uh, you know, share a short story with you. And this uh, example has been taken from a tech talk by David J.P. Phillips. So I would like to give due credit and reference to him. So the story is something like this. In 2009, a man called Robert Walker, he was a journalist, really wanted to see if storytelling is a powerful tool or not. The claim that people are making that storytelling makes you, you know, make more sales. Is it actually true or not? So what he did was he went ahead and he bought about 200 products from eBay for about a dollar each. And then what he did was he reached out to 200 authors and asked whether they would like to write stories for these objects or products. Basically write a story for each of the product. And they said, yes. Now this person, Rob, has 200 products and he has 200 stories. Now this was the real test. He went back and he uploaded all the 200 products back on eBay. Now, because he had 200 stories and 200 author, uh, he had 200 products and 200 stories, he linked one product with one story. And what would have happened next? Would there be any change to the product? Would there be any change to the pricing of the product? What would happen next when he bought from the same portal, that is eBay, for a dollar each, and now he uploaded it with a story again. And now what would the change be? 
you would be surprised to know that the same product, one of the product, which was a horse's mouth, which he bought for 99 cents was sold for $62 or approximately $63. Shocked, right? Even I was when I heard this story or when I read this example, that's the power of storytelling. Now you could say that, you know, money, that's just one product. That's just a lucky draw for him. He wouldn't really have made much sales. Not really, my friend. He bought it for $129. He bought all the 200 products for just $129. And hold your breath. He sold it for $8,000 in total. I mean, I can't even calculate what is the kind of ROI he made on this. And why was he able to do that? Because he had stories in place. He had stories attached with those products. Now, why and how does storytelling provoke us to make more money? It's very simple. Because the story leads us to an emotional investment. The more we relate to the product or the service, the more emotionally invested we are in, in the product. Now, in today's session, I would be covering four parts. Number one, why storytelling for making scales? Number two, framework of a story. The third part is going to be how to come up with different stories. And the fourth one is going to be analyzing storytelling, wherein I'm going to be sharing examples with you where, I've picked, where uh, these examples have been picked up from different profiles and one or two examples are of my own profile, wherein I break down and decode the stories for you and help you understand how to write amazing stories. So let's get started with the part one, which is why storytelling for making sales. Now, before we get to the part of sales, I really want to share that what exactly is storytelling? It is a process to gain the attention of a particular individual towards you. It is you who is taking that particular individual on a journey with you and bringing in a transformation on their return, okay? Now, I have one question, okay? What is the easiest way to fall asleep? Now, I'll give you a moment. What's the easiest way to fall asleep? I am assuming that you agree with me. Reading a boring textbook full of facts easily puts you to sleep. That's how I fell in, you know, how I fell asleep the moment I opened my books in my school. But what if I give you a textbook that takes you on a journey? It's a story. It starts with a certain character. It ends with a certain character. And there's a whole, whole details in between. I bet, you know, I would, and I bet that for you as well, you would stay awake to finish that particular story to, you know, at one length, because you would want to know what happened next, what happened next, right? Now that's the power of storytelling. It keeps you hooked. It keeps you engaged all the while. Let's see how does storytelling pave way to make more sales? Now, I'm sharing two examples here. So I will be reading example one, and then I will be reading example two, and then I'll be decoding both the examples for you. And then we will analyze which of that made more sense when the call to action was to make more sales for that particular product that we're talking about, or let's say more signups for the particular product that we're talking about, all right? So example number one. I've been using the super awesome LMS called Zenla. It has funnels, live webinars, and live classes. And to top it all, it has three sites in the pro account. And dude, kid you not, it has an amazing support staff. And the way they have their weekly three-hour co-working sessions, that's a brownie point. I surely recommend Zenla to you. If you are a coach, you should definitely hop onto Zenla and sign up. So that's example number one. Now example number two. My business was a mess, a huge mess. I mean it. I had tons of tools subscribed, paying almost 10,000 monthly on tools, which made no sales. And the tech was a headache. I was really wondering if I could learn to manage an LMS and automation and whatnot, or should I focus on what I do best, my subject and my knowledge? And that is when I, got, I joined Sort of Jen, who introduced me to Zenla. And I was blown away. It was really all in one platform. I gave up on my Zoom subscription immediately. I gave up on active campaign and I run all my courses without the headache of a tech very, very smoothly now. 
By the way, just wanted to ask, what are you using for your coaching business? What is the LMS that you signed up on? All right. So these were the two examples that I created and the call to action was same for both of them to create more signups on Zenla. Zenla is a product and my CTA is, I want to make more signups on Zenla. And that's the kind of post I have created. I know, uh, and I'm sure when I ask this question to you, which one would do the job? Which post would motivate people to sign up on Zenla? I am assuming that you would agree with me that's example number two. Why? Let's decode why it's example number two. Because in the first three lines, I'm talking about my problem, what I was going through. In the second set of lines, in the second two paragraphs, I'm talking about what is the problem they solved for me. So the first three lines are the problem. The next two paragraphs, that is four lines, is the solution. And then the last two lines is a CTA and one-liner, uh, what do you say, a one-liner summary and a CTA. And that's why, and the first one, I sound very salesy because I'm only talking about the good part of Zenlo. I'm not really, you know, focusing on why Zenlo is so good. I didn't talk about what is the problem, then how would people know that how Zenlo solves the problem? I never focused on the problem in example number one. So they don't really know how it solves the problem. But in example number two, I'm actually focusing on the problem in the first three lines. So when I talk about the solution, they actually know why the solution is worth it. Why should one go for such a solution? Now, why storytelling works best for sales? Looking at the examples that I just made, number one, you don't directly ask them to take action. So what I said here that, you know, which uh, LMS are you using for your coaching business? Which LMS have you signed up on? So they would rethink, am I also paying 10,000 monthly on these LMSs? I am also giving a lot of tools. Do I also have to put up a Zoom subscription? I am also, you know, subscribed to Active Campaign. Should I also try Zenla? I didn't tell them to try Zenla here. Here, I openly said that I surely recommend Zenla go sign up. That's a, that was a very salesy pitch. But in the second one, when I said, what are you using for your coaching business? That was an indirect pitch. I told them what solution Zenla has and I told them, go check it out. I didn't say it directly. I said it indirectly that it works for me. It's up to you if you want to check it out or not. And when you, you know, tell someone, when you don't really tell someone, some, um, okay, let me rephrase it. When you actually don't put the words directly, if I don't tell someone that go check out this LMS, they, when I say that go check out this LMS, they might do it, they might not do it. But when I say it's working for me, but what are you using? That is the case. They will definitely check it out because they will feel the one that I have, is it super, uh, you know, profitable to me? Is it working like this girl is talking about? Is my LMS uh, providing all of this that this girl is talking about? They will definitely go and check out my solution that I'm sharing with them. Second one, it is relatable to them. They become a character of the story. So here in this example, when I was saying my business was a mess, it was a huge mess. All the coaches that are hearing me, they know when they start out in the business, tools become a tech problem and tools become a revenue problem when you have to pay back and forth for the tools up to 5,000 to 10,000 Indian rupees I'm talking about monthly. So as soon as I say this, they'll be like, oh, this is me. I am a coach. My business is a mess. I have so many tools subscribed and really I can't handle the tech. This is me, my story, but they become the main character of the story that I'm talking here. So it becomes relatable to them. They can relate to it and they become a character of the story. Third one, they believe it's doable because someone has done it. In the first one, I did not share the backstory, the after story and what the solution right now and what is it working now. But in the second one, I told them, like I've repeatedly been saying, what was the problem? What was the solution? And and in a very short line, I also gave them, I run my courses so smoothly now. That small, tiny line tells it that it's possible, it's doable. The girl here sharing her story has done it and you can do it too. So that's why storytelling makes more sales. Repeating the three reasons again, you don't directly ask them to take action. It's relatable to them. They become a character of the story. 
they believe it's doable because someone has already done it. All right. Moving to the second part of the story, framework. How exactly, how to exactly break the story. All right. There are two parts to this framework, the story and the storyteller. So what you saw in that post right now was the story. Who's the storyteller? I am the storyteller. In this session, we would be focusing on the story. It's as much as the story is important, so is the storyteller. But I would not be focusing on the storyteller for now. I would be focusing on the story for this session. Okay. And hear me very clearly when I say this, because the next slide is very, very important. A story has three sections. It is very simple, yet very effective. The first one, again, this has been a learning that I've taken from different sources where I've been learning. The first part of the story is called as the departure. <coughs> I'm sorry. The first part of the story is called as the departure. The hook that captures the attention of your audience, that makes them read the story, that makes them click the see more button. The second one is the journey. Here is where they break their false beliefs and believe in the new beliefs that you're sharing with them. So when we talk about the post that we just read, the departure, the hook could be my business was a mess. I was a mess and the tech was a headache. That could be a departure. They would be like, why her business is a mess? Why is tech an issue for her? What is wrong with this girl? That's the hook. That's the departure that they become a part of my story. The journey is going to be where I tell them that, you know, I was paid for this, that, that is when I um, joined sort of Jen, I discovered Zendler, and that's the journey they are on with me, because right now their false beliefs was every tool, you know, requires money, and we have to go on different tools. You can't really have one tool that solves all your problem. That was their false beliefs, and I broke them in the journey with me. The return. They come back to their normal life after reading the story, but now they've come back transformed. And while they return from the journey, they are more enlightened and believe in the transformation you had just shown them. So when they came back that, you know, my business is running very, very smoothly now. By the way, what is the kind of uh, LMS you use in your coaching business? So that's the transformation that it's doable and I can do it too. So a story always has three parts and I will be breaking down several examples for you in the presentation forward where I'll show you what is the departure, what is the journey and what is the return. All right, I'm really excited. Are you, if you are listening to me and you like what I'm sharing with you, just put it down uh, below the live on the Facebook group. And once uh, I'm done with the session, I'll definitely go back and look at your questions and your feedback as well. I hope you're enjoying the session. All right, so here I have one of my posts, which I've broke down for you. Let's read the entire post and then I'll uh, break down departure journey and return, okay? So as I started my, I am going to read it for you as I'm telling you the story in front of me. Like we are sitting on a table one-to-one -one, having a cup of coffee and I'm sharing this with you. As I, uh, as I started my day uh, opening my email, I saw this notification pop up from Elementor Experts. This client from US wants to work with you. I jumped out of bed with feeling that it was time to earn some dollars. I quickly responded to the mail. Would you love to understand your requirements better? Can we get on a quick call? The call was booked for 8 a.m. in the morning for the next day. I got up really early that day, set up my laptop, waited for the call to start. As soon as we connected, he said, Manmeet, you must have done 100 plus websites so far. To his surprise, I responded, no, I've done only 30 plus projects. And he took a moment to absorb that. The call continued and there were questions back and forth. I also suggested him what's the best kind of site he wants to achieve. By the end of the call, I closed the deal because he was confident of my expertise and had also seen my past work. And I realized less is more. Quality is far more important than quantity. This is one of the core principles. How many websites have you designed so far? What has been your experience with clients? Now let me break down for you. The departure is when I take them on a journey with me, with a hook, I tell them that, you know, I was starting my morning and I received this email that I have to work with an international client and I would earn some dollars. So that's a kind of a hook that I've made up to make people become a part of my story, 
okay and in the journey i tell them i i remember i told you you have to break beliefs so as a web designer a lot of people feel that if you don't do a larger number of projects that is 300 400 or maybe 500 you are not really a good designer so i decided to break that belief in the journey part of my story that it's not really important to do 300 you do 30 and they should be qualitative enough and then after the journey is over, I also put the, uh, put a question towards the return for the transformation where I ask, how many websites have you designed so far? What is your experience with your clients? So that's a kind of a story. And anybody who would read this, maybe, you know, would want to get in touch with me, would want my services or my advices or whatever. But this is the kind of post which makes me more sales through the story. Departure, journey, return. Departure, journey, return. All right? Let's go forward. <coughs> okay, having said that, there are seven elements of a good story. Let's go through each one of them. Now, I would be sharing a story. <coughs> Sorry. I would be sharing a story when I, uh, I would be creating a story when I, you know, share each part with you. The first one is creates anticipation. This means that, you know, when you start your story, the user must or your audience must feel that, uh, you know, how did this happen? What is she talking about? What is he talking about? Uh, what is the situation? What is going to happen next? Like, for example, when I start my story, if I had got another chance, I would have definitely changed the way I looked at the situation yesterday. As soon as I start this, people would feel what happened yesterday? Why would she want to change it? What has happened that she would want to change it, right? Okay, and then the next one is, okay, just give me a moment. Yeah, the next one is Bill's curiosity, I'm sorry. So that means that if somebody is reading your story ahead, they should feel, my God, what is gonna happen next? I wanna read further, what is gonna happen next? For example, it was a regular day. I started my day with a morning tea and read my favorite book. So people would be like, okay, it was a normal day. She was starting her day with the morning rituals that she was doing. But what happened that she uh, wants to change that particular situation? Why does she want another chance? They're curious now, right? So that's the second element. Third element is details. Whenever you share particular details in a story, people tend to remember it. Whenever you share minute details in a story, people would certainly remember it. <laughs> it was 9 a.m. I was sitting at my work desk. Remember, 9 a.m. That's a particular detail. Sitting at my work desk, another detail. I switched on the laptop after plugging in the charger. So there are very minute details that I'm giving here. And this would make people remember my story. The next one is tonality of words. You might have heard a lot of times that, you know, tonality is very important in sales. How you say it, the way you say it, you have a lower pitch, you have a higher pitch. All of that really depends upon how you're talking. So when we are writing, how do we actually do that? <coughs> tonality of words actually means are you trying to take them on a softer journey? Are you using some soft words that would melt their heart? Or are you using some strong words that would give them a, you know, a feeling of commitment, dedication, or you would want to make them feel uh, sad or maybe soft or empathize? All of that comes under tonality of words. So the next one that I put is, I saw the email pop up and paused for a moment. I couldn't believe my eyes. So when I say tonality of words, I couldn't believe my eyes. This means I'm either shocked or I'm either amazed. They don't really know what has happened, but I'm either shocked that is something bad happened or I'm either amazed that something good happened. It was an email from one of my students. That's tonality of words, okay? Next one, get them involved. This means make sure they are on this journey with you. They are a part of the journey, they're listening to you, and now they have become the character of the story. They are listening to you and they are there imagining as if, if they were there in that particular situation, what they would have done. So I go forward and I say, my subject read, I hate you. I read it and I got furious. Who could say something that 
like that without respecting my knowledge and my experience. I wrote an email back, a response back full of anger. Now, if somebody was reading this, they would become a part of the story and they would feel, yeah, yeah, she's absolutely right. If I had to start my day early in the morning, if I opened my email and saw that somebody's putting me, I hate you and sorts of things, I would have also got furious. I would have also written a reply full of anger. She's absolutely right. They've become a part of my story and they've become a part of, or they've become a character in my story. That's what you have to do. Now I have to keep it very, very crisp not taking them round and round and round. I'm already doing that since the start, covering each element of the story. I don't really have to take them round and round because if, if I start taking them round and round, they will lose their patience, they will lose their attention and they will go to another story, somebody else's story and become a character of their story. I have to keep them here. So now I have to keep it very crisp. When I was about to send it, I noticed the last line which said, thank you for being there. I was wrong all this while. Now they say, all right. Okay, this was the thing. And now we are moving to the last part, which is the lesson. This means when you're sharing your story, you have to make sure that towards the end of the story, you leave your audience with a message, with a call to action, or you know wherever you want to take them towards your sales, towards your programs, wherever you want to take them. That's when I realized I should have been a little patient before reading the email. Do you also, now this is a CTA. Do you also take impulsive actions? Maybe, you know, you sell something related to life coaching, mindset coaching, something related to that. In that case, this story could be magical for you. Do you also sell, you know, uh, take impulsive actions? And then I reiterate. If I had got another chance, I would have definitely changed the way I looked at the situation. Did I hook you in that story for a moment? Were you also thinking that, you know, what is going to happen next? What is she going to say next? So I'll read the entire thing again for you. I'll read the entire story as one full post. If I've got another chance, I would have definitely changed the way I looked at the situation yesterday. It was a regular day. I started my day with morning tea and read my favorite book. It was 9 a.m. sitting at my work desk. I switched on the laptop after plugging in the charger. I saw the email pop up and paused for a moment. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was an email from one of my students. The subject read, I hate you. I read it and I got furious. Who could, uh, how could someone say that without respecting my knowledge and experience? I wrote a response full of anger. Just when I was about to send it, I noticed the last line which read, thank you for being there. I was wrong all this time. That's when I realized I should have been a little patient and read that email. Do you also take impulsive actions? If I had got another chance, I would have definitely changed the way I looked at the situation. Right, makes sense now? All right, so let me just take you through all the seven one. Uh, if you want, you can write them down <coughs> or take a screenshot. The first element is creates anticipation. Second one, builds curiosity. Third one, details. Tonality of words. Gets them involved. Keeps it crisp. And the lesson that is your CTA. All right. Now, before we move forward, uh, before we move to how we come up with different stories, I would really want to know that how this, you know, how did this story, if you're watching this on a replay later on, do put the hashtag replay and let me know below the comment, uh, you know, below the video that what kind of an impact the story that I just shared an example made on you. Were you hooked to it? Were you listening to it? And just to share, I think I had a slide, but I can't see it anymore. Oh yeah, there is. Just to let you know, that entire story was a fictional story. None of that was true. I just used it for example purposes, okay? So now your question would be, all right, Manmeet, we've understood that what is the power of storytelling. We've understood how to break down the stories. We've understood how to write a story. But the question is, how do we come up with ideas? Where do we come up with ideas with? How do I write so many stories every single day? I'm not an author. How do I write stories? I have a very simple answer for you. I know very simple way, but this way requires efforts. 
this way requires dedication and efforts and a lot of observation. That's it, but the answer is very, very simple. Okay, let's go forward. Once you decide to write stories for social media or your emails, write the call to action first. What do you want your audience to do after reading the story? You cannot write the story and then decide the call to action. You have to decide the call to action first. For example, when you're writing a <coughs> story, your call to action could be you want them to read your blog. Your call to action could be that you want them to sign up for your free challenge. Your call to action could be that you want them to buy your $7 product. Your call to action could be that you want a one-on-one, -on -one cons uh, you want your students to come on a one-on-one -on -one consultation call with you. There could be multiple call to action that you have, but you need to decide a call to action first and then you build your story from there, okay? So we begin from the end. Now, like I said, how to come up with stories, there is a very simple answer and the answer is observation. These pretty little eyes is your answer and this tiny little brain is your answer how to come up with stories. Now, you would say that, would I be creating fictional stories every single day? Do I keep, uh, you know, creating stories? I can't do that. I have not learned story life. No, you don't need to do that. Once you have made observations, make sure you write it down for your records. Keep a pen and paper handy. Like I also shared in one of my motivational uh, Zenler pop-ups that keep your phone available always. Whenever you get an idea, write it down in a notepad. Write it down on your you know, phone notepad. So make observations and make record of it. Keep a pen and paper handy or use your mobile to take notes, okay? I get it. You might be feeling, I don't get it. Uh, what observations do I make about who and when and how? What do I actually do? Just guide me a little here. All right, let me take you through it. Okay, towards the end of the day, let me, don't, let me just not share that story with you uh, right now. Towards the end of the day, once you've ended your entire day, just sit down, close your eyes and recall what all happened the entire day and start, you know, as soon as you get a moment that, you know, this is something that I can write about, just note it down. This is an observation that I made, just write it down. So every day before you end your day, 15 to 20 minutes, sit down with yourself, quiet, in silence, and close your eyes and recall that how did your day go? And then make observations and stories out of it. And I am somebody, I'm always going to handhold you and help you out. So here I have another example, another story that I'm going to share with you, how to recall your day. Okay, I'm going to be sharing my day, what I did yesterday, and we are going to drive stories out of that particular day. Okay. Okay, so let me share my yesterday. How did I spend my yesterday? So I had slept a little late night before. So I got up a little late around 9 a.m. in the morning. I laced around the house for a bit and then I got to work on my system. I read important emails, uh, did a few team meetings, spoke to my team. I attended a workshop to enhance my skills. As per my to-do list, I had to prepare three presentations today and I could only do one, which was the utmost important. Towards the evening, I stepped out for some shopping and then came back to host the Zen Zone co-working. Zen Zone co-working is a three-hour virtual co-working sessions that happens Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. All right. And then I took another session with uh, one of the individuals and then I sat to work until midnight because I did not complete my work as I got up late. Okay. This was my entire day yesterday. So now when you sit down and you've recalled your entire day, now think what are the potential stories you can drive out of it? Where are the factors where stories could be driven? Now, out of the entire summary of my day, I pulled out three possible stories. Number one, learning never stops. Always be a student. Here I said I attended a workshop to enhance my skills. So I can always share a story of, you know, how uh, I am a business coach or I do this, that, and all sorts of stuff. But I'm always a student because learning should never stop. And I build a story out of it and I say, what are you learning currently? Which program are you a part of? That's a story. Second one could be one thing at a time. I try to do it all. 
I shared here that uh, as per my to do list, I had to do three presentations, but I could only do one. That is, I had set unrealistic expectations. I could only finish one thing at a time. So that's a story, one thing at a time. And I could build an entire story out of it that, you know, I had just expected too much out of it and I wanted to do it. I had to get up early and all sorts of things. And the CTA could be what is the one thing that you achieved today? And a third possible story could be time management because I worked till midnight and I got up late. So that could be another possible story, time management. So that's how you sit down, summarize your entire day, see what all happened and pull out possible stories from it. Is this helpful? Is this exciting? Tell me below the um, live video that you're watching. And if you're watching on a replay, just tell me if you find this exciting and if this helps you to create more and more stories. We will be moving soon to the fourth part. And before we do, just a second. Now we would be moving to the fourth part where, would be, uh, where we would be analyzing stories. And I would be helping you to break down each story into a journey, uh, sorry, departure, journey, and return. Okay, so we would just have a two minute break and then we'll uh, start with the fourth part. Just two minutes and we'll start with the fourth part. Hi, David. How do you think it's working out? <laughs> this is really good um, for, for a few reasons. One is that people do find it really hard to uh, know what to put for social posts or even to post in general. And I think that looking back at what you've done in a day and um, writing it down in a very short summary um, can really spark ideas for posts. Um, so I, I think this is great. To be honest, I've never I've never used this. I, I, what I tend to do is um, observation. You mentioned this already is I observe a lot. Like if I'm in a cafe or something, if I'm in a conversation with someone, I'm thinking, oh, you know what? That's a brilliant idea. You know, if I'm, especially if I'm talking on, on topic and and even talking to people in lives, I'm, I will write down. Uh, what they've said, because I'm like, oh, that would be a great topic as well. So that observation side and um, your interactions with people can also spark topics uh, that um, that you can use for social posts. Another great place is like the Facebook group. I do it every day. Almost you do you do this stuff. If you do this stuff a lot, you do it without thinking. So it's kind of like to actually for you to turn around and say, look, this is what you need to do. I think people will be really surprised, especially if they, they can't think of things. I think they'd be really surprised what they could pull out of it. And it'd be really good to see in the posts um, if people are doing this. I've tagged in there for them to tag you in. So uh, oh, okay. if they yeah, so if they tag you, then you'll know that they've written it. So maybe even in there, just put your ideas, guys. You know, put your ideas. And, you know, if you're struggling to pull out the topics and you tag Mammy in, she'll come in and say, oh, well, that's a topic, that's a topic, that's a topic, you know. <laughs> and, and once you do it, maybe a few times, you'll start to just do it naturally. And like I said before, like the Facebook group is amazing because I go through there looking at answers and questions um, and uh, people are um, expressing their opinions and things like that. And this can spark challenges. This can spark team meetings between, um, you know, the whole Zen of the team to actually say, right, OK, we need to do a challenge for this because it's a really good point this person's bringing up. So from someone else's observations, we're actually put something into practice and won't turn it into a social media post. No, we'll turn it into a course or we'll turn it into a challenge. You know, that's how far and how powerful um, communication observation is. You know, it's definitely a key thing, Mammy, for sure. Uh, this is great. It's getting some good feedback in here. I think there's going to be a lot more on the replies as well. Uh, I love it. This is a great one. Thank you. Thank you so much. And like you absolutely said, I think two pointers that I did not put in. And David has just mentioned that striking up conversations always opens up more room for stories when once you start speaking to people when they get you know they put in questions to you when you're uh, discussing something you come up with a lot of ideas i generally come up with a lot of ideas by talking to people and then of course the social media and facebook when you go through what other people are doing that's always an inspiration to learn from them and do a similar story of what you've experienced your real life experience 
from their story could become another story. So that these two definitely are pointers that you could use for bringing in more amazing stories. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even like, even if you did nothing in the day, you're like, well, I didn't do anything yesterday. I was just, I decided to have a lazy day and just sit down and read a book or watch a film or something. Even that's a topic how to get motivated, yes. you know, how to get motivated, how to get going. You've created a topic um, from just something you haven't done. <laughs> so I think, <laughs> absolutely. I think, yeah, I think it's good. I think like sometimes looking at something like on the negative side and you say, right, how can I turn that negative into a positive? And suddenly a story um, comes out of it. Um, also, like it's good as well to just play around with things, be playful with things. I love the the fact that you were mentioning the sort of tonality of words, um, because of course that is used in how you are on camera as well. The way that you're you're actually expressing yourself and the volume you're using and the you know the tonality of of your voice, um, which obviously reflects exactly the same in words as well. And it's just something that if you use like things like all capital letters, it's usually shouting at people. Some people don't like it, uh, but it really makes an impression like it or hate it. It makes an impression, you know. So these are kind of things as well. So I thought the tonality side of what you were speaking about, about storytelling is um, also really valid as well. Now you co combine all the things that Mammy is saying, then uh, you have unlimited posts that you could do to social sites, really, you know, over the course of a week. <laughs> you know, how many Thank stories? Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank all you right. so much. Are you carrying on, Mammy? I'm going to leave Yes, it. I have a few posts. Uh, we, could do, uh, we could do it together as well. I've just taken uh, some pointers from those particular posts. I have six of them. So we'll be going through them and uh, we'll be reading them that what people are doing. So if we want, we can do it together as well. I'll just be reading the post and you could share that what is your opinion out of that story. So the first post is from a person who starts with her uh, hook, or I would say uh, the departure is, I realize the importance of to-do list. And then she takes on, you know, us on a journey where she says, few months back, I shared on LinkedIn that I do to-do lists are not important and they're not needed to get the work done on time. People in my network tried to explain me the use of to-do lists, but me being, me did not take the advice seriously. But over the months, I've realized its importance and facing problems to manage work and learn it the hard way. Now I say to-do lists are extremely useful and important to manage us. Remember this, the entire journey they, she's taking the audience through. And then the last part, the return is, this was one of the silly mistakes I did as a newbie freelancer. What mistakes did you do as a new freelancer? So this is again, one part of the story where she is sharing her mistake, like David just now said, to turn your negatives into a positive post. So that's what she's done right here. What do you think, David, about this post? Yeah, I think it's really good because the other thing, of course, is, and this is the magic thing, is connecting with people that you don't don't know that have never met you yeah. so if you can do these things and share and this is what's so good about stories i mean we know that books are just amazing there's some amazing books out there and you you know literally laugh or cry over them um, because it's a connection so sharing some of your troubles that you've had and um getting over them is such a big and powerful journey and this um, this sort of explains it uh, really, really well, I think, and gets people to comment. That's what you want. You want this interaction with people. Uh, we exactly. love it when, pe when people are posting on the, uh, you know, like today, when people are posting on what Mammy is talking about. We love that because we want that interaction. Even if you just say, yes, this is great or, you know, oh, I do it this way. It's that interaction. So it's better for you as well, because if we see that you're posting and interacting with us, then it just naturally brings you closer together, even though you don't, haven't met that person. So I think this is a powerful one, Mami. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so the second example is where this person is talking about uh, generate more sales through content. Okay, so this is a post talking about how to generate sales through content. So he starts with a hook, that is the uh, departure. Last week, I got a DM from one of the followers asking me a series of questions. So here, anybody who's, you know, reading this would start the departure saying, okay, what is the DM he's got? 
what are the kind of questions that the person who's DM was asking? What is going on here? What was the conversation? They would want to read it and they would click the see more. I've taken the screenshot this way is because I would, uh, I wanted to tell you when you make social media posts, the upper two, three lines are visible and then it's the see more. So your two, three lines, which is actually the departure has to be super good for somebody to get on to that plane, to get on to that train and hop on and to be on that journey with you. So when you click on see more, he tells about, you know, what is the questions uh, that person asked, what should you do? And then he shares what content brings in. And this is the entire journey that he's taking through. The last one, which is the ret return he shares, is your business using content to generate more leads. So he's asking here, what do you do in your business to generate more leads? How do you, uh, you know, get conversions? So this is another type of story post that you could use. A story does not really have to be something that has actually happened your experience or what you experience every day or something that you've learned from somewhere could also become now the topic here that he's sharing that sales um, generating more sales to content is something he might have learned so he got a dm he converted that into a particular story sharing his knowledge of selling through content so this is another type of a post that you could make yeah and it's um it's showing value as well um, yeah. In fact, this brings me up. I was thinking, I was looking at this and I was thinking, actually, do you know what? This is what Kevin was talking about the other day when um, he was saying that he runs, um, he runs lots of lives. Um, this is off, off of Zen. This is for his online visibility um, uh, site. And he, he was actually saying that he actually gets people in there. He does it with video and he gives people for free like loads and loads of value and he doesn't hard sell them at the end it's like yeah. they they take up on what he's saying because like they're like well this guy's giving me all this information it's really valuable and uh he, he's not hard selling at the end you know and because of that he gets people contacting him and he gets pe he gets people taking his courses or his memberships and so this is a good example of kind of what kevin's doing live and kevin uses these kind of approaches where it's not hard selling and um you know which is the way and kevin's been doing this long before uh people used to hard sell all the time kevin's been working in this way and it's a very subtle a nice approach a really loving approach to towards people giving them value not hard selling them anything and they take him up on it because of what he does um, and so i think this is quite good for that kind of um that approach Exactly. I think this is something uh, what I just mentioned in the starting that storytelling works best is because uh, you don't really directly sell it. You are selling it. But as you mentioned, very softly, indirectly, people get value and they get connected to you. Yeah, for sure. That's good. That's a great one. All right. So let me move to the next one. OK, this is a very short one. So he's just sharing three lines, which is also a, a departure journey and a return. He says a Chinese restaurant may charge two dollars for an Italian dish, but it will still be deprived of customers. So why? Because writers who provide personal branding services will have similar problems. So he's just sharing his knowledge on part of a three part story. A story does not have to be a long paragraph. It can be two to three lines. So this is just another example of two, three lines, a short story, which tells you that, you know, this is the kind of knowledge I can put out. So if you're, uh, of course, all of us are coaches. So uh, regarding your product and service, you can share something of two, three lines that breaks that false belief for your audience. So this is another example of a post. Yeah, this is a great one, uh, Mami, because uh, what what this guy's doing here is is fabulous because what he's doing is he's causing he's going to cause a riot. You know, he's going to cause lots of people to be commenting on this because this sort of subject, because already I want to comment on it. I want to say, well, if you're getting an Italian dish, you wouldn't go to a Chinese restaurant anyway. You know, it's got me <laughs> it's got me furious to, to write that. Um, that obviously we know that like some people go for fish and chips in Chinese restaurants and or they do um, curry sauce in fish and chip shops and you're like why 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 <laughs> so it's already getting me kind of um, I want to post I want to post on this subject um, so in that case I'll share like, the link of the profile with you on the <laughs> personal chat Oh, I'm not going to. I might. I might. Okay. <laughs> but you can see how powerful this is. And it's just a few lines. 
Um, it's just he, someone's observations. You know, he might have gone into, uh, he might know the, the, the owner of the Chinese, or you might see these things around and think, why are they doing that? You know, post about it to generate some interest in those sort of things. And I think this is, this is kind of a, um, a classic case of that, classic <laughs> case. <laughs> There's one more example from the same guy. I hope he doesn't do that now, but here he's starting with the hook. He's starting with the departure saying, mom and dad are ashamed of me. I failed my CAA finals for the fourth time today. I ruined their dreams. And as soon as somebody reads it, they'll be like, why are the parents ashamed? Why he couldn't do the CA finals for the fourth time? Why did it take him four attempts? And what kind of dreams have they ruined? They would really want to read that what has happened with this guy? Why is he making his parents ashamed? Now, from here, and okay, I missed this line. I don't think I'm a good son. I don't deserve to live anymore. So that's a kind of a hook where people feel he's lost the will to live. What has happened? What is wrong with this guy? So now he, people get on and hop on with the journey with him. Okay, his departure is really nice. He's taken people on and he's taken on a journey and he shares everything about the journey. And then in the end, he shares, mom, dad took away all the stress in merely few seconds. I still don't know if I've got, uh, you know, done good enough to be a good son, but surely I deserve to live and make them feel proud of me one day. So here's a return where he shows people that even if you've failed, even if you've you know, not achieved something in your life, you still have hope, you still have scope and you can do it. So that's another kind of story where you don't have a CTA, but you're giving out a message. You're sharing a message with your people. So that's again, a departure, a story and a return. So this is another uh, example. Yeah, this is a really great one. It's kind of like, um... You know, you feel like you you have you have an opinion about it, and yeah, any if you look at it, you're going to have an opinion about it, and you're going to be probably be prompted. Now, it's funny because um, that seems to be um, Hadik's uh, approach to to this. You saw in the last one, he's causing reactions and um, reactionary. Yeah. Also, blog posts, reactionary blog posts are um, the same kind of thing. I know that uh, I mentioned in Kevin again because remember he blogs. And that's that's the approach that he takes sometimes to get people to react to things. And uh, this is uh, this is a similar thing going on. So you've got to because you're thinking, well, what, what's it got to do with mum and dad anyway? It's my life kind of thing. You know, that's what you're thinking. And uh, and then and also the, he's got the story going through and it's like everything in life. You always like build yourself up to things. And it's never as bad as you take it out on yourself like if you think oh i failed and then you've got to tell someone they never it's never as bad as the reaction you think you're going to get um even if you're doing sort of a live the first time you've been on the camera and you've got butterflies and all these things or you're on stage and you're going to sing or something um you have all these butterflies but actually when you do it it's kind of like well that was easy what was i worried about and you might have spent a week before worrying about all of this stuff to realize that there's nothing to worry about in the end anyway which is what the story finally comes to <laughs> It's yeah, he's great. also got like 125 reactions to his post and I don't know how many comments. So that's the kind of impact this post is making, which is again a story. So I have two more. So I'll be sharing the last one first because I think that's a little more important. And these are my stories that I had put up. Uh, and I'd also like to share, I've, uh, you know, uh, deliberately taken a screenshot of the views is because I wanted to share that this is one of the posts that had the highest views when I'd made them. It is about 800 views. That is one of my highest because of the departure of my story. So I, you know, I put up a question first that how do you manage your time as a web design freelancer? And then I take them on a departure saying fighting with my husband was becoming a daily routine. Six months ago, we literally fought each single day. And to tell you, this is not reality. This is a story that I've put in just so that I could move them to my message. So I didn't really fight with my husband every single day, but I just wanted to tell you the hook. I've also taken a screenshot here uh, with the fact that my line ends where it is Seymour. So when people read this, that this girl is fighting with his husband every single day for six months now. So what is wrong with them? Why sh and what has web design freelancer to do with fighting with his husband? What dots is she connecting? They would be prompt to click on see more. And that's why this post has got the highest views till now. 
and I go forward and I said that, you know, he had this complaint that I sit in front of my screen as soon as I get up from my bed. There's no time to switch off the laptop and X, Y, Z. I keep sharing my story. And towards the end, this is the entire journey that I'm taking them on. And towards the end, I'll share the return, the transformational return. Having said that, when I implemented these three things in my business, having said that, I have a routine to follow. I enjoy my meals, take care of my body, and also take leaves whenever required. Again, I give to I give a CTA. How do you manage your time as a web design freelancer? This again is a, a example of a story post and keeping my emphasis on the departure that I did. The departure made people read my story and hop on to the journey with. So this is another example. Yeah, this is a great example, Mami, because um, also I want to bring up the point that you've put the, you know, those three comments in there just above the fold. So then you see the see yeah. more and then it breaks into the story. So it's really important. And on that on that note, that's exactly what we do for pretty much every social media post that you do. You're going to make sure the important stuff is right at the top. So it's always seen. So you don't want to have the important stuff, especially if it's links. Um below that where people have got to click see more or read more or open something up to see the link you want to make sure it's in that top section so mammy's done that exactly here it's got three lines really quick and easy to read and gets you intrigued to read the rest of the story going through to reach the conclusion so as mammy is saying you're taking people on this journey you're always finishing the journey sometimes you can do a story that doesn't finish the journey that keeps people interested and you might send them somewhere else to read more about it. That's good. Exactly. Exactly. So I think summarizing the entire session, a story is always three parts. It's the departure. Make sure your departure is above the sea more. So they are uh, kind of hooked to get on that journey. That is the second part with you. And once they've gone through the departure, the journey, it's time for their return to their normal self with a transformation. Or as David mentioned, if they are not returning, if there's not a CTA, send them elsewhere to read another story of you. So that's how you sell through storytelling. And as always, I love bonuses and there is a small bonus for uh, you here as well. So like David mentioned, I will be available for you live to review your story post that you write. If you want any ideas, if you want, if you're writing stories and you want my help to improve them, if you want ideas related to how to come up with these stories, I am available for three hours in a Zen Zone co-working. Me and Liz uh, are going to be there Tuesday, 10 a.m. BST, which uh, goes on for three hours, then Thursday, 3 p.m. BST, and then Saturday, 5 p.m. BST, live with you to help you create more and more stories and make more sales. With that, um, just a second. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's really good. Yeah. Um, guys, we have shown it in, in um, BST there. But if you go into the Zen zone, you'll see there's a time converter. So it'll give you the time that you're in. So it'll tell you the session time you're in in there. And Sorry, having Mary. said that, no, no, that's okay. Having said that, write more stories, make more sales, and make Zenler proud. This is Manmeet, Assistant Product Educator at Zenler, signing off for today for this session. <laughs> Fantastic. Do you know what? I think this is a really good challenge, Mammy. I think that you've got, <laughs> you've got that all set up. It'd be quite interesting for you to turn that into a challenge. You've got all the slides and then you can take a, you know, you can take a rotor of people through it and, um, and lead on this. So, you know, I think we have a new challenge. Guys, if you want Mammy to run a challenge like this, please say yes in the chat. Say Mammy, yes. Mammy, yes. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, and then if there's enough people, then maybe Mammy will run a challenge on this. <laughs> sure, definitely. So if I get enough, yes. I don't know what the number is, but whatever enough would be, if I get a lot of yes, I would definitely run a challenge on this one. That's good. See, put Mammy straight on the spot. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you so much, David. I had a lot of fun today. I hope everybody who was listening to me learned from it, got value from it, and let me know uh, how I did. If there is anything you would want me to improve, I would definitely take care of that in my upcoming sessions. We got lots of yeses coming, Mammy, from the guys <laughs> that are watching. They're uh, they're jumping in, so uh, I think we're going to have to do it. So there you <laughs> go. <laughs> All right, I'll just take a look at the Facebook post. I haven't till now. 
So I will. Thank you so much, David. It was a All lot right. of fun today. Lovely. It's been fantastic. See you later, Mammy. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Right. So, guys, we have uh, we have Liz joining us in a minute. She'll be popping up and um, she's going to do a little presentation. So she uh, she was put in last minute on there um, because we've been so busy. We've been running a three uh, three day email challenge. Me and Alice have been running that. And uh, it's been we've been running at 9 p.m. BST time, which is 4 p.m. US time. So we've been really busy uh, doing those things. So I didn't manage to put Liz in there, but it's always a good thing to see Liz. And here she is. Hi, Liz. Hey, <laughs> it's unmuting. Good to see you. Oh, you've got looks like you've got a whiteboard. So this is a complete yeah. like Mammy. This is a complete surprise. What she's going to do? It could be anything. It could be anything. <laughs> what are you going to do for us today, Liz? Okay, so actually, it follows on perfectly from what Mammy's surprise session about storytelling was. So it's all about communication. And just looking at the really base idea of a communication model, so how we each individually take in information and how that's going to affect how you communicate with your family, your friends, your colleagues, and also obviously your clients and your potential clients. So it should marry on um, from Mamie's awesome storytelling session quite nicely. Oh, beautiful. Brilliant. All right. Shall I just leave it to you? Yeah, sure. And then if you want to sort of come on as I round up and ask me any communication questions. And obviously, if anyone has any as we go along, pop them in chat and then I can address them at the end with David. Excellent. All right. I'll leave you to it. Um, call my name and I'll be there. OK. Oh, <laughs> that song there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See ya. OK, awesome. So I do indeed have my awesome whiteboard. So. What I want to talk to you about today is the communication model. And this communication model was actually created back in like the 50s, I think, uh, actually I think maybe 75, um, by Richard Bandler and by John Grinder. And it's just looking at how we process information. So in every second, we are being bombarded by information. It's coming in through all of our senses. So our sight, our smell, our taste, our touch, our hearing, and it's coming into us here. So we are in every second receiving over 2 million bits of information through all of our senses. However, oh, there we go. However, we can only actually process about five bits of information. So that's a massive drop. And what our mind does, it's it's able to actually process and it deletes, it distorts, and it generalizes this two million bits of information into just the five that we can actually manage with. And how it does that is by deleting, we'll take in some of the information that we're being presented with. And then by generalizing, we might do things like, for example, if you hear a pop song by a specific band and you go, I hate all pop music just because you hate that one song by that one band. So that's a generalization. And we also distort information. So it could be that you see um, like something yellow lying or, or sort of like a, a greeny light yellow color lying on the grass. And you think, oh my goodness, it's a snake. And you've distorted it. And as you walk up to it, you see it's actually just your garden hose. So those are three ways that the mind is able to deal with that processing, taking that two million bits down to just the five bits of information that we can manage. And with that big jump, you can see how if somebody witnesses like an event, you can have a completely different version of what you've seen because the likelihood of you and, you know, person B next to you taking in the same five bits of information from the two million bits that you're being presented with is really, really slim. So it helps to, you know, kind of give you that understanding of personal bias, which is something I learned at school. I'm not sure if any of you did as well. And this is just going like deeper into that. So the other ways that the mind processes that information 
is through time and space. So we relate everything that's going on in relation to time. Um, you know, what time of day it is, what time of life it is. And we hold all of those internal representations of things that are going on in our minds. We also hold them spatially. So in relation to you, to where you are, to things around you, and obviously globally now, especially with, you know, the amazing internet, we can hold things, you know, in relation to that. And also language. And language is something that obviously we learn as we're younger. So you learn that within the environment that you're being brought up in. Also, the people that you spend your time with. So you're going to be absorbing their language. And again, within each moment, that two million bits of information that you're being bombarded with, you're only going to be taking those five bits. So as you're learning things, you get to be kind and patient with yourself. Because from the two million bits of information coming into you in every single moment, you're only retaining five. And that's how we often like repetition to be able to pick up new things. So, for example, with my mate's awesome story session, it may well be worth um, enjoying it again and absolutely jumping on her challenge when she does her challenge, because you're going to get to be um, you know, available with that information processing in through you more. And that's hence how practice gives you progress. So the other way that the mind helps to narrow down that information is through your values and beliefs. So again, they're things that you will have taken on depending on where you've been brought up, depending on each and every one of your experiences, which have brought you all the way to now. So all the things that you've um, enjoyed, all the things that you've learned, all the things that you've shared with those around you. And you will have taken on some of those values and beliefs as you've moved along in your life. And then as you get older and you start to look back and reflect, you're able to actually begin to choose what your values and beliefs are gonna be and also your attitudes. So here we have that two million bits of information, loads and loads of them coming into us. We've narrowed it down to just the five. And from that five, we then get an internal representation. And that's like a kind of, like a picture. So it's a bit like a map. So for example, we've got the whole world and we've drawn that whole world down onto a map. But the map of the world is just a representation of the world. It obviously isn't the actual world. The actual world is far bigger than any map that we could create. So it's like we've then created a little internal representation in our minds of what's happened. So again, at this point, you're going to have lots of distortions and deletions so that your experience of something that's happened is going to be completely different to somebody else's. So as each of you experienced the story examples that Mammy shared, it will have given you a different feeling. You will have had a different experience of hearing and sharing in that person's story. That internal representation then brings you to your state. So that feeling that you had as you heard the stories that she was sharing. And that's going to be completely individual and it's going to be absolutely unique because each and every experience that has brought you to that precise moment in time when you've experienced that story brings you to your state and it's going to be completely different for every single person. And from that state, you then have your physiology. So that's how you physically change on the outside. So for example, if it was a story and you thought, wow, that's really encouraging, that's really motivating, then your physiology can soften and you may smile as you're enjoying it. And from there, you then get the all important bit, which is the only thing that we can ever see from anybody, which is the behavior. So all of this stuff is going on inside every single person in every moment. And the only part that we get to see as other people is the behavior, the outside, the external behavior of that person. So it just goes to show this massive process, which is happening internally every moment, 
your unconscious mind taking in that two million bits of information processing them so we can consciously have that five that we're actually processing. It's creating your internal pictures, your internal memories, your thoughts, and that's then moving you into your state, which is then showing up on how you physically are reacting and then takes you to the behavior that you choose to have. So with this whole process going on, when you're communicating with somebody else, it's worth bearing in mind that their model of the world, their internal picture of the world and of what's just happened is going to be completely unique. So we get to be patient with ourselves because things take time. If we're working on something new, if we're learning a new skill, if we're improving our stories, then it's a new thing. So we get to be patient and slowly allow ourselves to process the information as we go. And obviously with the amazing support at New Zenla, you've got so many quick and easy ways to get started with things. So we give you lots of shortcuts, lots of top tips to get the most out of your New Zenla website time and design as you can, and be able to have that time to actually do the repetitions and to go deep into things quickly. We then have what's happening on our inside, leading on to our behaviors. So when you're dealing with a piece of information, so for example, like a call to action, it's worth considering that every person in your potential audience is bringing their own unique life and their own unique backstory to whatever it is that you're sharing. So you get to keep going because sometimes the one way that you've um, you've shared a story or you've shared a call to action, it may not resonate with a person immediately, but you may be planting a seed there. So you absolutely will then be able to repurpose that content, to be able to repurpose that story, because the next time that somebody experiences it, they're going to take something completely different from it. So even within like the quick start guide that we give to you, it's absolutely worth popping back into it and just having another quick check. Because when you go through it a second time, when you dive back into like individual sections, you're gonna find different information that you didn't notice on the first, um, like your first experience of it. Okay, so how can this support you? when you are having difficult communications um, with other people. One way is to be calm. And I know that this is a really easy and simple thing to say, but it can also be tricky to stay calm. And a really good way to, um, to support you with that is to take a moment just before you have what you historically may have thought is going to be a tricky conversation. Just take a moment to really picture that conversation or that communication going really, really well. And take yourself like 15 minutes after the successful completion of that communication and enjoy it, experience it and consider what you'll hear, what you'll see, what you'll taste, what you'll touch, and what you'll smell. And by doing that, you're giving your unconscious mind again, that internal representation, that actually a really successful result of that communication is absolutely possible and attainable because it's just imagined it. And that supports you as you then go into a communication which could have been previously prior to you um, sharing this little bit of um, training could have been tricky. And it's now not going to be because you're going to have visualized it going really well. You understand where that other person is coming from because they've got their own, like their own map of the world is going on based on all of their previous histories. So you've got that in mind. And the other thing to remember is that you can always find an agreement in a conversation. And an easy way to get an agreement, if you're coming from two very different points of view, is to chunk up. So keep going up until you find a common ground, which is like a purpose that you both share. For example, if it's working on a project, there may be like a really big goal that 
caused you to begin that project together in the first place. So to find an area of agreement is to just keep chunking up. So keep going like higher, bigger picture on whatever you're discussing. So if you were trying to sort out the next um, like chapter that you're doing in, you know, a course and you're working with somebody else, you could just say, well, what was the actual, the whole big purpose of us coming together on this piece of work? And you just keep going higher and higher until you have an agreement. And at that point, you can then slowly bring the detail back in so that you're both calmly able to listen and to process what the other person is saying. And always in communication, if things are getting tricky, if things are getting heated, just take that step away. Because if there's like a force and there's two of you and you're both going at your own different points of view, if one of you just takes a pause and stops, then the other person, there's nothing else left to hit against. So you can then just be calm, listen to the other person, take on board what they're saying in that moment. And it can easily be different to what their opinion or point of view was before, because in every moment, all of this is going on. And for example, if you're perhaps doing tired one day, your patience is going to be at a much lower level than it would be if you're fully vital, you've had a brilliant sleep, you've had great food, you're feeling really energetic, you're going to be able to have a much higher threshold and patience. So bear that in mind with the other people as well, because we only see this external behavior, we don't see all of this other stuff that's going on in the background. So just as you have good moments and not so um, amazing moments for connection and communication, it's the same for whoever else it is that you're dealing with. So that can be family, friends, it can be clients, it can be colleagues if you're working together with people. And it's just bearing this in mind when you come into creating your next communication. And a final thought, just as a really big picture thing on communication, is to bear in mind this thought, that the result of the communication that you get is the value of that communication. So the result that you get is the value of the communication. So if, for example, you put an offer out to somebody and they don't respond immediately, that's the result of that communication. But remember that you're always adding into people's unconscious minds because your unconscious mind is taking in that two million bits of information. So even if you don't get an initial return on that communication, you can still have that hope and, you know, continue with the faith, continue sharing those messages, sharing them in different ways, because people take information in differently. So some people prefer like different senses. Some people prefer auditory. Some people prefer visual. Some people prefer kinesthetic. So when they're actually get to go and do something. So just make sure that whatever content you're sharing, you do start to cover each of those different areas because it's going to enable you to support more people who have a preference for one of those specific like senses and specific informations that they're taking in and then just keep going because your call to action those really important points they will make it through and that's where your five bits of info are getting through and they're then going to lead your person into thinking oh, that's interesting. They're having an internal representation. They're keeping that data that you've shared. They're keeping the amazing transformation that your course is able to deliver them. That's going to make them feel great. They're going to, you'll see it in the physiology if you're doing like a live class or something. And then the all important behavior, you get the sales on your courses. So stay patient with your communication. Stay patient and kind to yourself as you're learning the new things, as you're expanding your new Zen knowledge and your skills in whatever course creation it is that you are doing. And also remember that each and every person is individual and in each and every moment, they're going to be absorbing different information 
They're going to take on different things from the information that you're supporting them with and just keep going. Okay, David. That was, um, <clears throat> that was really good. Um, Liz, that was excellent. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, yeah, a hundred percent. I agree. It's really, uh, especially if you're fiery, I'm quite a fiery person. So I jump the gun and I just go mad and I'm, um, it's really good. It's like with, with the help of like you, like um, Alice, like Rakesh and other people in my life. Um, I'm tr I, it's something you're working on. Cause I think like, this is a journey, you know, trying to get control of these things can take a long time. And I think the, one of the most important things I found is not, is to, wait a while don't just jump in with if you're fueled by something you know you're fueled you want to get something out um also e escalation as well uh you know someone says something you say something back they say something back you say and it, it's just an ongoing thing you can't you, it's never going to stop um, you're both like balls. You're just um, attacking and to actually stop or like you said, try and think, where's that person coming from? Are we working the same way? You know, have we got the same things in mind for uh, the conclusion? Right. Why are we arguing among little things? And, you know, and it is it is a case that I'm, I'm terrible like that. And I need it's something that I'm working on all the time i have to be quite careful sometimes it's not you know i, I want to give out positive energy <clears throat> i want to be helping people and um, and sometimes you can just get really caught up and just go oh you know just throw your your toys out the pram kind of thing so uh yeah so i think that was a really good one it's a really good one to to know i also like <clears throat> there's another thing as well like you have got five bits of input that you can deal with at any one time so like there are, um, and I know you know a lot about this, Liz, so it'd be interesting to hear your point of view, but there is this sort of like um, uh, idea that if you have a problem and uh, so in some cases, even depression um, and you actually do certain things, one of them might be to tap here, to tap here. Uh, one might be to listen to some music at the same time and maybe tap your feet. What happens is those things take priority and the thing that you're depressed about or the depression itself can actually slip away. Um, so that's that's an, an actual way that people deal with these these things. Um, you heard about that, Liz? Of course you have. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's amazing. And I think when you're dealing with emotions, it's worth remembering that what you think isn't real so your thoughts they're not real at all <laughs> you've created them because it's back to this it's your internal representation so it's not a real thing it's like a map of you like going back to those mind maps that, that we've done before it's just a little bit of you a snapshot in that moment so yeah you can absolutely take yourself out of those thoughts and feelings and yeah the tapping's really good um like a three things um wherever you are so to draw on three of your senses like do three things you can see in that moment three things you can hear three things you can smell and then bring it back into your body and do like three things you can touch on your body and once you've gone through that process firstly you're going to have taken six seconds and that's as long as it takes to reset anything you can do it that quick and then you've taken yourself outside of your mind because you're looking around. Then you bring yourself back in your mind and you've got your control back. Mm. Yeah. So you've got these like tapping techniques, obviously EFT as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's, um, you know, that, that can be a powerful way of, mm -hmm. of um, losing some of these things that happen. That, um, you know, I suppose like you've, you've got one side, you've got depression, you've got anger as well. You've got on the other side of it, you've got this anger. People have, I mean, in a car, it's a classic case, isn't it? Road rage where people are driving and someone's just like, you know, gone a bit close and suddenly the person goes red and starts honking their horn. Why? Why are you honking your horn? You're not going to get there any faster. I see it all the time in traffic and someone's honking their court because maybe there's someone being really careful when they come out in a roundabout. And you're like, well, you know, just that's the way it is but people are just honking their horns yeah. <laughs> and then got... the person in front gets annoyed and decides just to sit there and not drive and then you've got this 
battle going on. <laughs> it's hilarious, but yeah, but it happens. This is this is life, isn't it? Yeah, it does. It absolutely does. And it's where the different people you don't know what's going on because the only bit you're seeing is the behavior you're not seeing everything else that's happened that day so they might be rushing to a meeting that they didn't want to do anyway and it's been the time has been changed and like they're rushing 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 so they're frustrated or they could be even going to visit you know their wife could be giving birth and they're like I want to get there on time but from the outside you just don't know and all you get to see is like the angry you know hitting the thing and the person going really carefully, they might have had a bad experience. So they're taking everything really careful. Or they might just be feeling, you know, a bit fragile that morning for a million and one reasons. And all we're seeing is the outside bit. And we start to judge people on it. And it's, you know, taking that step back and saying, I'm not going to mind read why you're doing what you're doing. I'm just going to look at what you're doing. And then I'm going to learn to flex myself so that I can take away the anger that's in that communication. You can just be really calm. Um, and yeah. like a couple of ways to do it, it's like really lower your voice, really speak calmly and just do this and just go down. And if you're able to encourage the other person to do the same thing, because they might be all up here to say, oh, do you know what? I was just watching this thing today. And then if you just do it, if you're in some kind of rapport with them, they'll naturally like be following you with their hands and they will start to lower them because if you have your hands lower than your waist it's really really tricky to be angry because mm. your body's all got that interconnection um yeah these are really great tips uh, <laughs> for sure you know <laughs> getting people to to lower it all and um yeah so it's uh, yeah, it's a really interesting subject. And I think this goes across. So, you know, everybody's got to think because also the other side of it is your upbringing as well. What happened to you and, and our outside viewpoint of other people? You know, you, you make impressions about people and you don't know those people. It's um, we've all done it. I've done it. I, I don't now, um, but I did when I was younger. And, you know, it's not something to be proud of, but it's kind of like, you know, no different then. you haven't grown up properly. You're still, you know, you're not fully cooked um, at that stage. But when you look at someone, maybe someone's got green hair or something, you make an impression about that person or, you know, maybe they're carrying a little animal around with them or something like a little stuffed animal. And you make an impression about those people. And um, it's really bad because actually when you meet and you know those people or you know what they've been through, it's a completely different um, physiology to you. The way you feel about it then completely changes and couldn't be further from the truth. And um, and I think that's something, you know, racism as well. We have racism in this world, which is just ridiculous. Um, but it happens because of people's, you know, sometimes their upbringing, that's the way that they've been taught. And it's just really part of them. And it's hard to break. And that's why people see therapists, which is always a good idea if you want to break any kind of habit. Don't think that it's um, it's a bad thing to go and see a therapist if you've got a problem. They They know what they're doing and they can help you. And that's what you need to do. You can't say to yourself, oh, I haven't got a problem. I'm going to sort it out myself. I'm going, oh, I can sort this out myself. No, you, you need, uh, therapy doesn't have to be with a professional therapist. It can be with your best friend, but sharing and talking can be your therapy. So there's, it's such an important subject. You know, it covers so many different things. And it, it changes the way people are to each other which is obviously only a good thing and something, you know, I said, like I'm working on, uh, make no bones about that. And I think we all, all of us have problems. All, all of us have things we're working. I'm sure Liz has, she's very calm, but I'm sure she's got things she works on as well. Haven't you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I've always been calm and I've always been able to kind of look at someone and know how they're feeling. So you know like but I still had judgments because I grew up with them um so like a funny one my dad used to always say because he had childhood holidays in Wales and he used to go oh Welsh people terrible terrible I live in Wales I love Wales I love Welsh people but I grew up with him saying that and you adopt it until you then look outside and you go well, wait a minute it's complete baloney you know that was just his experience as a child mm. you know because I think he had to have um 
it was effectively like gruel. That was what they fed him for his meals there. And that's what it boiled down to. So from all his experience of those holidays in Wales, more that like bits of information coming in over all those weeks when he was a child, yeah. he remembered the gruel and he went, oh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the impression he got inside. It's funny because you need to, I think w- what it comes down to, I, I think it, it's just you need to, you need to go back into it. You know, if you've got these things, if you had these things and that's how you feel, you need to retake that experience um, because that can change things as well. Like I'm sure if your dad goes to Wales now, he'll be he'll have a completely different experience and go, oh, actually, that's yeah, good. And then he can relate to it. So the gruel might be over overridden by, um, you know, a nice ice cream he had or something. <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. And, and also just by having time, like with my daughter in Wales, you know, and so everything's different. Um, and obviously I've shared some of this with my parents, which was funny because they've brought me up. They gave me that initial model of the world. I've then done training and stuff. I've been able to share that back with them. So then their experiences are completely different and they're able to start taking that time to reevaluate them. Mm. Um, but it's absolutely, it's a process and it continues. So I'm always working on my communication like every day. So every person I'm speaking to, I'm getting to improve how I communicate, how I become clearer and get my point across like as well as I can, um, because that supports people better. Mm. Yeah. And also uh, there's so many different things, but it's like to my wife, like she's a therapist. She's done quite a lot of different types of therapy and it's um, that's the same as well. You know, she she work on herself and, you know, her parents as well. So it's all these Mm. kind of things. you know, and I learned a lot off of her and obviously speaking to people like you, Liz, and you use those things and then you're like, oh, you know, I'm going to tell my parents about these sort of things and, and, and things and just sharing and opening up, I think is a really powerful thing. Uh, and lots of people don't want to do it. They feel really uncomfortable to share um, to, to even even your parents, you know, to share their deepest thoughts. They they don't want to. And it's uh, it's hard to get it out of them. If you can, it leads to a better relationship for sure, because you can understand their point of view. You know, I want to understand why my mum does this or um, how what was her upbringing by her um, by her parents, you know, and my grand's parents before them and those sort of things. You can find these these traits that come down through generations um, that you can stop at this point in time and not move it on forwards to your children and those sort of things so it's a really powerful so it's a huge subject um liz so it fantastic hopefully people have got some use from this you know (laughs) know that i've got anger issues no i haven't got them now but you know we all do we're human and it's and it's that it's that being patient and kind to yourself because yeah. everybody has those feelings. And even when you clear all that old stuff, because obviously it stacks over your life, even when you clear it all away, new things are going to happen because life carries on happening. And mm. it's just being able to, like you said, to process it. So talk to a friend if that's how you process well. Write it down if that's how you process well. You know, voice note it to yourself. Just get it out of yourself, whatever those emotions are, because then you can move on from that point. Yeah. So be gentle. Yeah, it's, um, you know, on that note, I think the other thing about being a course creator is that we're putting ourselves through this all the time. You know, (laughs) we're getting posts on Facebook. Some like us, some don't like us. You know, you're being hit by these things all the time. Some people, um, they know or or they don't mean to, but they press your buttons because everyone's got buttons that can be pressed. If they press your button and you just go way flying off without giving it some time and actually understanding what they were getting at in the first place, which like my mate said earlier, could be something completely different. Like I hate you, but actually wasn't about that at all. You know, it was like, she's learned from it. Um, So that's another thing as well. It's, and, and I think we're in a really good position being course creators because we are exposed to this. So I think from a development point of view, this is probably the best career to be in um, to get over any of those problems, because you'll soon find out if you've got a bad attitude, you're not going to make sales. You're not going to have as many sales as someone who's really positive, energetic towards the groups they're in 
or any lives they run, it will come out, it will come across, people will notice. And you'd be very surprised because it's a small world you know, uh, as soon as you start being very negative to people, um, people catch on, then you ask a question that you need help with, and no one answers you. And you're like, I don't know why no one's helping me. And it can be because you're just being negative to everybody. And everyone's picked up on it. And no one's helping you anymore. So you can change it, of course you can. Uh, and you should try to change it to be a positive force, not a negative force. You know, that's what I think. Yeah, lead with kindness, lead with kindness for you first and then everyone else that is around you because then you get to and you do get to ask for help and you get to give help and you get to then receive it back with gratitude and just it's like that thing isn't it? like an attitude of gratitude so just take it easy with yourself but if you do find that you know those old emotions like any old anger any frustration things like that are building up then definitely seek support because there's so many people and certainly over the last bit of time help and support is really readily available so you don't need to do it on your own so i know the mind doesn't process don't so get support do it together <laughs> together is best you know yeah. <laughs> No, that's fantastic. Um, so uh, Liz, obviously, Liz runs the Zenzone sessions as well. So I don't know if you want to have a quick chat about your Zenzone sessions that you're running. Yeah, of course. So as my meet said, you can absolutely drop into the sessions. We can support you with whatever it is that you're working on. So it's not technical support that goes through the normal channels. Um, just email uh, the, the usual email address, nice and simple. But we're there to support you with whatever you're on. So if you find that you are hitting like a bit of a block, we can absolutely be there to support you, to talk around it, to see what your next step is. Um, we both obviously use New Zender ourselves and in different ways. So we've got different experiences with it and we can easily direct you to any of the like amazing resources that are there. We're absolutely there for that too. Um, and yeah, and well, communication support too. So if you're hitting like a communication um, block if you're hitting like a story block a call to action block anything really um, we're absolutely open and there to support you and the people that are there um, they're really lovely at giving support to each other as well so you know every now and then we do like a little brainstorm within the session and you know lots of us get involved so we're there to support you and it's your support space so whatever support you're looking for within like accountability within just having somebody else there somebody to listen so if you have had a moment um you know where you've been a bit confused a little bit lost then come and we can support you to find that clarity um because you have all the answers you just sometimes need someone to listen so you can process it and get to your answer um yeah i hope that is supportive <laughs> yeah and i'll put that i'll put that zen zone uh, session link into the chat so it's there so you can go and join up find out there is a little time clock in there so we put that in there so that because we have people all around the world you can go in there we always say things in bst time but we put a little converter in there so it'll give you the time in your um part of the world and you'll be able to see exactly where those sessions are coming up we have done lots of different sessions they do run for quite a long time um both you know liz is there heading it up with mammy and alice so th they're all in different time slots so you can just jump in there and um the other thing is of course guidance and help and you get to meet other people as well now we do have have a zen chat sessions as well which is networking which kevin runs and lots of people going there just to chat among ideas but zen zone you'll actually go in there and you actually have a goal in mind so you're coming to a zen zone session say right okay i want to uh, set up my automations for a marketing funnel that i just created so then you can go in there if you get stuck you can ask um, the team um questions on how to do something so they can help you or send you to the right resource so that you can get help on that. So it's all about moving you forwards um, so that you can complete what you're trying to complete and you can make money as quick as possible or get leads into your site. So fabulous, fabulous, Liz. <laughs> awesome. So I was gonna run, uh, are you gonna stick around with me, Liz? I can do if you would like me. It's up to you, totally up to you. Um, because I'm going to do the education slot because we had Tracy on this morning. We've got about a quarter of an hour back um, 
it's called from our left. Uh, we have Mammy on. Obviously, you've come on. I and um, because um, Tracy was in Australia, is in Australia. Uh, well, she ran it. I run nine a.m. Normally, I run the education slot of the first thing I do, but she needs to get in early, so she was in early. Uh, we overrun a little bit with her. I didn't ask her all the questions I wanted to. Then Mammy came in with an amazing. Um, journey storytelling of course then liz came in and backed it up by mental mindset which i think is such a powerful one so i'm going to move on i'm going to show you the tutorial site if i forget anything um liz jump in and uh shout at me no. <laughs> in a non-angry way okay <laughs> So uh, we have our tutorial site. So it's tutorials.newsendler.com. And these are our educational resource areas. Now, if you haven't logged in here before, you're going to get a slightly different screen. So I'm just going to go into incognito just to show you, um, because there's a few things in here that makes life a bit easier for us demoing this site. So if you've never been to here before, you can sign in here. Now, once you're signed in, you can join up for any of our content absolutely free of charge. We charge you nothing to go into here. If you want to find out more about the educational area, you can just click this little button. It'll open a little video that tells you about the New Zealand Education Hub, which is what we call it, and what your next steps are. <clears throat> so if you are new to the platform, you'll definitely want to click in here and take a free tour of Zenla with Alice. So she, she does these one-to-one, -one, these one-to-one, -one, the group sessions of people that are in there. It's always small, smallish groups of maybe eight to 20 people. And inside there, she'll take you around the platform. She'll um, listen to if you have any concerns about if you want to upgrade to pro or premium. She will listen to you, tell you what you're able to do, what you're not able to do inside the Zenda platform, and also where the Zenda platform is going next. So a little bit of a look at the future future of things as well so you can get a lot of amazing information from Alice in there she'll also supply you with a document telling you what and where to go next and she will say come to the tutorial site and sign in um, once you're signed in you'll then have you'll see this screen again if you want to know more about actually when you're logged in and what's available to you, you can click this button and watch another little video explaining what this site is all about. And this is our training hub. So inside here, we have all of our on-demand videos. So these are videos, these are courses that we've created for you. It means that they're just on demand for you to watch whenever you like. You need to sign up for the ones you're interested in. When you do sign in, you're going to get another little tab that says my courses up here or enrolled courses. If you click that, you'll see any of the courses or the lives that you signed up for. It's really easy. So if we're going to the on demand area inside here, we've put these in order. So we always expect new users to come in. And Alice says this uh, to take the quick start guide, just like Liz said in her presentation, if you watch it, it's always worth coming back and watching it again because it's like books or films. If you rewatch them, you get new information from them. So when you first take it in, there's a lot of information coming your way and you might not absorb it all um, because of the mind. And it's funny, this all fits together, doesn't it, Liz? All yeah. fits together. You know? Puzzle. News and the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So if you take that and you don't kind of understand it, watch it again. Of course, you know, you can always post um, questions about the Zenda platform, not support ticket questions, but the questions about using Zenda. You can always post those in our Facebook group as well, which you're watching this in. So you're part of it. So you can ask questions there. No question is a silly question. All right. No question is a stupid question. Get yourself out of thinking that when you're posting. If you need a question answered, then you just ask it. Don't think it's silly or anything else, um, because otherwise that can hold you back. If you think that you're writing something that, oh, everyone will know that. Why am I going to post it? Get out of that. Just put it down there. People would love to help each other inside the group. So once you've done the quick start guide, you'll probably download the Zen the basic checklist. This will be a way for you to just check off um, the things that you've done in the site. Now, 
the next course here, the complete guide to Zender. Now we expect you, this is huge. This course is massive. Um, we expect you to cherry pick the information that you need. So we don't expect you to work through it all. We expect you to say like, I'm on, I'm want to create a marketing funnel. So we expect you to search in there. It's got search functionality, go through to the marketing funnel section, which will be under marketing. So it's a marketing and marketing funnels. And you can learn in that section about how to use marketing funnels. So we have lots of other additional ones. These are our three main ones. Now under here, we have lots of other courses as well. We have, and these are purely to help you. Some of them aren't even on the Zenla platform, but branding and design shows you branding principles, design principles, ethically copy a site is actually because this, lots of the, these courses here, um, these supplementary courses were actually created because members inside the Facebook group ask for it. Uh, for this ethically copier one, it was a classic case of someone saying, how do I get my WordPress site? How do I make it look like my Zender site? Or how do I make my Zender site look like my WordPress site or my Wix site or my Squarespace site? So we created this course which showed you I take a site, a WordPress site, and I convert it into a Zender site. And I do the same with a Netflix site as well. Netflix create their own site. We just take what they've done and we convert it. We show you how easy it is to manipulate the blocks and make it look like another site uh, or the site you want to get across. So this is a really good one to take. We also have hardware and software set up, which looks at cameras, green screens, and the sort of setups that we use here at Zenla. And they, all these courses are growing. So there'll be new content in there if you sign up for them. Uh, we have advanced ninja tricks. This is coding. This is for more advanced users. Um, although saying that even total beginners that have never touched code before have used some of the tips out of here. So we also have some template packs. This will be disappearing when we bring the new page builder out because it's going to have um, page pack designs that you can just load straight into your site. But for now, we were just covering you by creating a few packs for things like certificates, uh, some of the form blocks, some of the page block elements. And we put that in there. There's also full themes in there, which you can download and load. There's installation instructions, download instructions on how it all works. Uh, so we move on to Sunday workshops. So we were running Sunday workshops. They finished about a month ago. And this is all of the video recordings from that. Um, it covers everything to do with Zenla. It's worth looking if you're interested in certain parts of it, like emails or funnels or how to set a site page up. It's worth jumping into the live workshops. Uh, we also have the first edition of live workshops done in 2021 here. This is 2022. Uh, we also have any challenges in here. It contains everything. So we have any challenges that we're running. So we just finished the three day email challenge. It's still open. You can still join it. We've got a bonus day happening on Monday, this Monday coming up. And for people that leave a review, we're going to put them into a draw for some swag. So um, if you jump in there, take those replays and then join us live on Monday, that would be great. We've got marketing basics. If you don't know anything about marketing, you want to take this because this will take you through all the marketing um, elements you need to do. Uh, again, it's not all on platform. It's looking at things like Google Search Console, Google Analytics, these kind of things, and showing you how to put them into your site, um, how to set up the sitemap and submit the sitemap to Google, all these kind of things um, done in a really easy way. So if you go into Marketing Basics, it shows you all of that. I would say it was more of a basics intermediate than a basics course. It does cover quite a lot in there. Uh, we have a pre-registration for a summit we're going to be running how to we're going to teach you how to run a summit how to set the summit up and all of these things that's coming up we've got um kevin's here five day challenge boot camp so it's really successful this one it's a really nice one to jump into it's only just finished it really um and uh, people love it so it's how do you set up a challenge you know like today have mammy on she was talking about storytelling and i just hit her at the end with like we should turn this into a challenge so she would go through these kind of processes that kevin's got in here to create that challenge for you guys zen chat is a networking session we already talked about that that's where you can get together with other users and discuss ideas you can network together maybe if you've got similar courses in, in in not exactly the same niche but slightly different niche you might be able to cross sell each 
other's courses. It's where networking can be re really powerful. Um, with that comes the point that you don't have to give them an affiliate commission if you're both trying to sell each other's courses on your courses. So this can be a really powerful thing as well. So you can reach their audience and they can reach your audience. And uh, that's good. We've got the five day blogging challenge and we got launch your first course bootcamp as well, which these were run by Kevin here. Um, he tends to run these. He will run these again, but these are um, these weren't run that long ago. And as we mentioned before, we've got Liz there with the Zen Zone co-working session. So if I just jump in there quickly, you can see inside here gives you a little video on what's going on, tells you all about it. And you jump into the co the actual co-working session and you can book there. It's absolutely free. And you can then go and book the session that you're interested in. And then you'll receive the automations of when they come up. So that is a really good place to go. So that's our on-demand training. And if I go back to here, we have our live challenges and boot camp. So any live challenges that are going on or recent past ones, you'll have them in here. You'll also notice Zen Zones in there because it is a live event. So we kept it in there. And the last one to go out was the three day email challenge there, which happened on the 23rd. That was the start of it, the three day challenge. So that is our um, challenge, our challenge boot camp area. Live events always go in here. So we got things like a day with Zenla, um, office hours, and you can see information about that and join them. Office hours every Wednesday alternates between 5 and 10 a.m. BST time. Um, day with Zenla runs the last Friday of each month. So the next one will be the end of June. And uh, that'll be good. And for that one, I will not be, uh, that'll be the first one that I haven't actually hosted. So the team will do that. So I think it's going to be Liz or Mami. So they're going to be backing each other. They'll be going to be running a day with Zenda. So that'll be really exciting. So I'm not droning on all day for you. It'll be, it'll be the lovely soft voice of Liz and Mami. So, uh, <laughs> you don't drone. You have a lovely <laughs> voice. <laughs> So that would be great. So we've also got latest features here. So this tells you, um, this actually takes you, sorry, I'm not logged in, but it actually takes to our YouTube channel. So you can see all the latest features going on in YouTube. Because uh, you're inside here, if you've upgraded to Pro Premium, you can attend the onboarding session with Alice. So Alice, with this particular one, will be taking, a, taking you on the journey of what do you get now that you're a Pro member? You know, and what do you get? Do you get access? You get access to lives. You get access to blogs. You get access to all of the brand new features that are coming into the platform. So, well, as a as a pro or a premium member, you can go and Alice will take you on a tour of all those things. Again, you probably upgraded because you're ready to go. You know, start your work seriously. So you might have a lot of questions to ask, and you can do that um, with Alice in those uh, sessions there. Now down the bottom, we have all the rest of our resources. So we do say, just go into this site and have a look around because you'll be quite surprised with all the things we have in here. Like under the resources, we have report bug technical problems. We also have the Zenla change log. We are one of the only platforms that actually shows you a full release of all the change logs that go on on our platform. Right. Most do not show you any of those. So we show everything that's going on, all of the little fixes that are going in. You can find that in the change log, uh, something we're very proud of that we do. Um, we're totally transparent here at Zenda with you guys. We also have the Zenda status page, which tells you how our running services are going. And if any of them are down, for instance, if Vimeo is down, it will show on there and it will give a status to when it's back up and running. So if anything happens wrong with your site or it's not working, first place to check is tutorials.newzenda.com, go into resources, go to Zen the status and see that the status of that service is working. You can also submit your site to our showcase site. So our showcase site is showcase.newzenda.com. Um, I think I've got it right. And this is our showcase, right? So this is low. This is only Zen the sites. And there's lots of different um, sectors in here. This is really good. Like if you're new to this and you're like, well, I do art and I do art and craft. That's what I want to create for my site. Click the art and crafts area. Go and see those sites and see what other users are doing. 
you can have a look at their sites and uh, you can get inspiration from them. You can see, you could even connect with those people. You go on the Facebook group and you can actually connect with those people if you're interested in the way they did something. So, or you want to tie up with them in some way. Say someone's doing oil painting and you're doing acrylics. You say, well, we, maybe we can um, go across. Can we both go into the Zen, uh, Zen chat session and network together? And uh, this is how these things can be formed. And you can make a lot of money by collaboration um, with material um, for sure. So that is our um, submit your site. It's definitely worth doing it because not only do you get to have your site on there, but you also get a link. So you get a backlink into Zenda, which helps your SEO. So it's a win win on both sides. We also have the paid plan comparison, which shows you the differences with all the uh, features that you get on all of the plans. So the free plan, the pro plan, and the premium plan. You also get the competitor matrix. So it looks at Teachable, Thinkific, Pod um, Podia, I think, and it compares the features that are in Zendler compared to them. So you can see exactly what, what you're getting. We also have a Zendler new request uh, form. So what we do at Zendler is we allow you guys to give us your feedback on what new feature you would like inside the platform. It's purely done on the amount of numbers. Uh, that's how we work out the priority. If there's a ton of people looking for a certain feature, it will be implemented. Um, but if there's only one or two, then it probably won't go in because there's not enough interest to put that particular feature in. That's how we work. Again, I think we're the only platform that does that, that takes actual feature requests. Um, so that is another first. We always like to do be first here at Zen. Though. We always want to be pushing it doing things that the other platforms just, they wouldn't do, you know, they, would, they just wouldn't do it. So we always try and jump in and do as much as we can for you guys. So going forward, we have Zen the comparison again. I just talked about that. We have technical support. These are our social channels. We have access to our newsletter there. And you can also have your say as well. So have your say, it's worth jumping into. You can tell us what you think, um, if you liked our workshops, um, a day with, you can also join us for a day with Zendla. Uh, this afternoon, we have Angela Sundust and we have Erin Bookeye on. They've been on before. They're coming on again and uh, should be a really interesting one. Of course, we had Tracy on earlier. If you think you've got something to share to the community and group, join us. You know, click here, submit your form, and we can then contact you, arrange the slot, you can come straight on and you can tell people about all the wonderful work that you're doing and help the community um, understand. We also have educational support here as well. So you can tell us what you think about us, our educational support. Doesn't matter, good, you know, good, bad. We need to know that we're doing things right for you and that we're doing everything you want us to. So this is our tutorials.newzenla.com site. Uh, it's got everything there for you uh, and hopefully you enjoy it. So I think that's it. Did I miss anything, Liz? No, that was awesome. Very detailed. Right. Very good. Woo. Brilliant. Right. We are one minute past 12. So that's the first session of A Day with Zenla finished. I want to thank um, Tracy Browning for coming on. That was absolutely amazing. Mammy's journey, storytelling, obviously fabulous Liz um, with looking at the mind you know, that's three massively powerful sessions. This afternoon is going to be really good. We've got Alice on, so she'll be doing her thing. We've got Angela Sundust on there. You can see what she's doing in session two. And we've got Erin on that's probably going to take us on a little bit of a masterclass on how to do things inside Zenla, because that's what he does. All right. So session two starts in three hours time. Well, two hours, 59 minutes. And we'll see you then. Again, thank you, Liz, for joining us today having me <laughs> that's great all right see you this afternoon hope you liked it